Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of By the Numbers. I'm your host, Richard Lewis. Joining me, as he always does, is uh, Duncan Darren Shields, the esports historian. It is a strange time to be recording a podcast about esports, very somber time, obviously, because of the terrible, horrifying news uh, about the invasion in Ukraine by Putin uh, at the time of recording this, uh, which is, I'll even say the date, it is the 4th of March. Um, Obviously, the conflict is still underway. Uh, And just to kind of front load the episode, we're not stupid. We obviously know talking about esports at a time like this and the way the geopolitical situation intersects with esports probably seems frivolous and not really on anyone's minds at all. We recognize that. We're not trying to diminish what's going on by doing the show. Um, But and and over the course of the show, we're going to talk about how this has affected esports. It is not because we don't recognize that this none of this matters by comparison we're absolutely more than aware of that but this is what we do we've got patrons that we you know pay to have the show we are not politicians we are esports experts sometimes not even that and um you know we're we're trying to talk about this this as best as we can under these circumstances um and so obviously we're not trying to take away from whatever anyone is going through but the reality is this has had an impact on the most recent tournament. It's impacting yes. on the lives of our friends, on players you admire and care about. And so... Which we, is mainly the context we have to discuss it in, yeah, right? We so, so I just want it. people to know at the beginning. Think about this. I'll give you an analogy because at the moment it's a perfect analogy for the world. If you went back in time 60 years, obviously if you were to talk about sports, I'll pick a sport like ice hockey would be an obvious one, Richard. If I was someone who worked in ice hockey and I was doing an ice hockey show and at the time the iron curtain existed i might say on that show it's such a shame that this player could be from any country within the soviet regime shame this player couldn't compete in this in the nhl for example because obviously the iron curtain means he is over that side and we can't use his talents that doesn't mean by the way in any way you're saying like you know the iron curtain's fine and i don't think i think what russia does is okay you're not saying any of that what you're doing is you're only doing it through the narrow lens in this case of hockey and we're going to do basically the same thing with counter strike slash esports we might a tiny bit touch on other stuff but it's a political show obviously yeah and and you know listen we we uh you know we know like we we've seen like you know i i've deleted a tweet uh because we're going to talk about some of the sanctions and stuff that are coming and how that's affecting esports and it's very hard because obviously of the visceral horror of what's happening it's hard to have a nuanced conversation we recognize that we're not going to hold it against anyone who gets upset these are trying times for a lot of people um but this is what we're here to do we're going to try and do it the best we can under the circumstances before we do uh continue and get into that obvious the show is sponsored new sponsors uh midnight.com have uh, sponsored uh this uh all of my content They've been great to work with so far. We've had a wonderful response from the community. We're going to be doing some watch alongs, but they're a betting platform that basically do real sports as well as just our thing. So that's going to open up some, you know, content opportunities, maybe some UFC watch alongs. Oh, that's and that cool. Kind of stuff. So, you know, watch, watch, uh, watch this space on that. Um, but do go and support them. Uh, if you sign up with, uh, you know, my name, um, you can deposit twenty pounds. They'll they'll match that right now. And also, of course, our VPN sponsor, NordVPN. Uh, you know, absolutely amazing sponsor. Been with us a long time. Just recently re-upped. A lot of support from this community for that. So support them because they support us. Right. Okay. Um, so let's start. I am Katowice. We're gonna break down the tournament a little bit more, but obviously. Um, what's ended up happening, you know, coming out of that because of the situation in Ukraine. The sports world has rallied to condemn Vladimir Putin's actions, which honestly are the actions of a fucking madman. I mean, like I never thought, you know, when you when you hear a lot in politics and on the news, oh, he's lost his mind. But actually, it's like it's a calculated move and the person is in control right. of their faculties. Um, it's just it doesn't chime with your you know worldview or, or whatever. Sure. But generally, they're doing it to kind of like, you know, to some goal in that makes sense to them. This is ridiculous. This is nightmarish. And I've been watching the speeches and everything else. And it's just, it's just, you know, I, I, I never thought we would be here. I didn't think I'd see anything like this in my lifetime uh, again. 
And, you know, um, the, the sports world has rallied around to condemn that and try and apply pressure on the oligarchs, the wealthy businessmen that operate in the Russian territory or abroad, but still principally from Russia and with Russian interests. People who you will know have ties to the government, have ties to the Russian government, ties to Putin himself in some cases. And so the sports world has rallied round to apply that pressure. We've seen the Champions League final be moved. It's not going to be in St. Petersburg anymore at the Gazprom Stadium. You can see immediately how this is designed to work. It's going to be in Paris. The overall sentiment behind it is that if you if you hurt the business interests of these oligarchs, they will say to Putin, the war has to stop because we're all losing too much money. This has been done in, in, in tandem with sanctions designed to hurt Putin's war machine. Uh, and so we're, you know, my initial reaction, and I think where I, I maybe fucked up and was a little bit naive, you know, I'm still living in a world where I think, he's, I think because I'm old school boomer, you know, I'm thinking of esports as being this little thing that's on its own island away from it. Oh, of course, yeah. But, you know, as we've scaled up, obviously it comes within a different set of responsibilities and expectations. And we are part of mainstream now. We are part of the mainstream. Yeah. We are part of sports. It is a big deal to operate in this space. So as a result of that, there are two teams particularly uh, that are owned by known oligarch figures, uh, Virtus Pro and Gambit. And so we had the first announcement from Blast on the 1st of March uh, to say that no Russian-based team is going to be invited to play in their uh, qualifiers or events for the foreseeable future. They cancelled the CIS qualifier. Um, we'll get into the kind of nuts and bolts of that in a moment. Uh, but that kind of set off um, a chain reaction of other esports companies yes. mirroring that. And so we, ent we enter a world where people that I know don't support the war are going to be negatively impacted as yes. we try and pressure the oligarchs by hurting their business concerns. So right out the gate, Duncan, obviously I'll get your thoughts about this. I know it's a very weighty uh, topic, but I know it's one you've given a lot of thought to. Yeah, the main issue with this topic here is like, we, there's a whole load of layers to this onion. First of all, there's the angle of like, how did these tournament organizers message what they were doing and what does it infer about what their intention was? Because that's actually very important if people don't understand. Like, I'll give you a quick example. We can obviously, we can spin this out as much as you want in a minute. Basically, when they said very carefully, it's not the only bloody careful thing the blast did, when they phrased it as, you know, we will not be inviting, right? That's one of those things. I'll give you a quick uh, analogy. You remember back in the day when I was effectively blacklisted by from working for ESL because of the obvious kind of eight to incident. You remember Carmack used to try and fuck with me. It's weird how he do that, isn't it, fans? Have you been watching the show a long time? It's almost like he's a villain type character, right? If you remember, he used to try and fuck with me by intentionally on Reddit when a fan would go, they would do the same thing with you with Dreamback. I remember when the, a fan would go, why is Starin banned from ESL? He would pop up on Reddit and reply and go, what do you mean? He's not banned at all. He could buy a ticket to the next kind of eat all he wanted. But he was doing that, as a, by the way, as a way to fuck with me, because what he's essentially signaling to me then is, I am essentially banned, but he's just not going to call it banned so that then he can just play silly beggars. Unfortunately, I got that vibe here, because when you say you're not going to invite them, that sounds pretty tame. It just sounds like, you know, they just won't be invited to the next event. It's like, well, no, that, that's the mechanism by which, since they were invites for certain teams, you would you would have gotten them to your event. But effectively, you have banned them. You, by, by every colloquial meaning of banned, you have banned those teams from competing. Yep. Although, true, not the players. So first of all, there's the whole mess of the messaging, which I think, by the way, I, I'm going to use this phrase very carefully. I think I did more harm than good. It literally, as far as I can tell, either A, conflated and inferred things Blast would at least publicly claim they don't agree with and don't like, for example, persecution sure. of just random indiscriminate Russian players, for example, who have nothing to do with oligarchs. They would imply it doesn't do that. But this is the part that I found very sinister. I almost feel like, at best, it's sort of like they wouldn't have been averse to some people who think that maybe thinking that is what Blast was messaging and in doing so Blast gets a sort of a goodwill because remember mm. in any kind of a conflict scenario people are going to make it there are two sides and the premise goes if you're on one side you're totally against the other side and that almost there was almost a divisive element to it and by the way this is another part I didn't like about the messaging you then end with the old gaslighting which you always yeah. do when you're being divisive of like I'm doing the opposite and being inclusive you know when you do the, the sort of the SGW well, I've got it in front of me 
there was that as well. Yeah, yeah, go on. Let's get into yeah. it. No, you, you know, look, I, I'll say this not lightly because obviously I, I don't really call for people's jobs or anything on the short. Like, Blast have got to get a new PR. Like, whoever is handling their PR statements, Blast have fucked up a, a ton around messaging. You know, and it's not just that. They fuck up on messaging. Then they go missing sometimes when people want to hear from them, a la Neon. And they, yes, true. And they just do the ostrich effect and think, we'll put our head in the sand and it'll go away. And of course, for, for the in 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 the in the optic era, yes, where everyone has to have a stand on a particular topic at any given moment in time, and it's all done through social media, that no longer will ever be. kill it with science. Silence is no longer a strategy. Yes, you cannot do that anymore. It just doesn't work. It worked ten years ago. It doesn't work now. There is an expectation, and so their statement, by the way, like listen, you just leave it with. Because uh, it goes, you know, we're canceling our CIS qualifier and we don't think it's appropriate the event goes ahead at this time. You leave it there. You don't add gaming and esports yes. unites people from all races, countries, and beliefs. We hope the situation on the world stage reflects this as soon as possible. Because by definition, what you are doing is you are you are saying the players on Gambit who don't support the war and have said as much, the players on Verse Pro, some of whom aren't Russian and are essentially removed from the conflict in the sense that they are sympathetic to the plight of Ukraine like I am, but uh, my country isn't what my country isn't the aggressor, nor is it the the victim. You're, and, and those players are going to be banned from your event and penalized because, and I would argue it's the right sentiment we need to continue to pressure these oligarchical owners of these sports organizations and sporting interests. But just don't don't say when, you know, it, it, it unites people. Right now, we're at an impasse. This isn't a united yes. front. This is a very difficult time in esports that tensions are obviously running high. And the, the I think we owe it to people to be very delicate in the messaging, which I know, yes. I, you know, I understand it's ironic coming from me. Yeah, of course. But, but look, this is, if we all agree that this is more important than almost anything else we'll ever talk about in esports, then surely the messaging has to matter and surely we have to get it right. And the last thing we want are, you know, look, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go off on a tangent here, Duncan. Who would have thought simple would like emerge as the man of our time? Oh, like crazy. The, yeah. the, the level head, right? Like think about what he's been through lately. He goes, he goes to Katowice, you know, tensions are high, sure, but nobody could conceive this was going to happen. Nobody thought the intelligence reports were accurate. He traveled to uh, he traveled to this tournament, had to give a speech at the tournament. I, I mean, I, I say had to, obviously didn't have to, but did, you know, to, said. My, these people here are Russian and they are my brothers and they there is I even thought it was quite telling to me that it was electronic that stood right next to a Russian yep. player like yep. to me that was even the essentially by the way one thing I don't like about this news again another detail we'll get to in a minute is that I don't actually think Blast and ESL were going to have any real say in this realistically there are much sort of like bigger, bigger forces, forces at work that would have denied them entry anyway so in light of that I'll also say this Essentially, if you're ESL, you listened to that brilliant speech from Simple and went, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Uh, don't do any of the stuff he just said. Uh, just fucking ban them if they don't leave the Navi. Uh, or, or in this case, fuck it, they won't be playing anyway. Like, you've sort of, you haven't really sort of gone with the spirit of his speech, have you? Because his speech also was the idea of like, gaming brings us together. We're more than just the people from the countries we're from, et cetera. We have a connection that goes beyond that. We're all this uh, universality of man, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, like simple made that point, and I got to say the crowd were amazing. Keep in mind, you know, we all know the history between Poland and Russia. Oh, of course, uh, yeah, no, uh, that's, what, that's one thing I don't think people give everyone credit for. But yes. right, as much as it was a great speech from Simple, you could even have done like an attempt at a good one and scoffed it and fucked it up like a blast style and said the wrong thing or the wrong sentiment or accidentally implied, you know, maybe like all Russians need to do something. You know, 
as you say with Poland, mate, I'll just tell you straight up. I've been to Poland many times. At, well, a couple of times, I should say. Many. I've been a couple of times. And every time I went, I would often ask Polish people, funny enough, at the time about the Soviet period. If you ever go to like Warsaw, for example, they have those sort of like Russian-esque, like, you know, cathedral things with like the minaret type thing. I don't know what the fuck the name is in Christianity. But you know what I mean? Those towers on them, right? With the very classic like Kremlin style, if you know the one from yeah. uh, Moscow. So, and I would always ask uh, people who were Polish and, don't worry, mate. Even back then, like they hadn't ever seen the war themselves, but they would just sort of be like, "Yeah, we fucking hate Russians here." So yeah, I actually thought, by the way, that generally, I thought esports in terms of the people in that crowd and the people giving it, they killed it that day. Everyone did an amazing job. It was very tactful. I actually, I actually, funnily enough, did. Here's the difference between what Blast did and what Simple did. I actually did get that vibe from Simple Speech. Like he has captured the feeling and he's yeah. maybe even channeled it in a really productive, healthy manner. Whereas actually, like you say, the Blast ones, like you're not only like by definition not doing what you're saying, but you're almost just like pissing in your face at the end by just chucking in that line. Like a stu- in this case, it was just like a stupid platitude. It's like yeah, yeah, all united or something like. What does that even mean? That's actually gross if you don't mean it. Yeah, yeah. And so, but not just that, not just in that in that moment, not just in front of that crowd, which could have been partisan, but course, it, yeah. but 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 in, in, incredibly supported everyone, supported Gambit, support, you know, I mean, like just a fantastic crowd. Like credit to everyone there. You know, we've talked a lot about terrible crowds. Well, love it, Monty that, is Russian, of course. Yeah, you know, yeah. that could that would be a really by the way, imagine what an awkward scenario that would have been if that had, had backlash to it. I'm so glad it didn't happen. Yeah. And, the first big land. Uh and so you know it's just been it's just been you know this this lot lots of emotions but for a moment we could dial in a little bit and and, and focus on the games. Obviously Navi weren't able to as as we'll talk about and for obvious reasons. By the way, on that line, this never happened, but I thought we may as well mention this is by the numbers. That's actually the one moment where the fact that, unfortunately, I got the vibe watching those games, that those three CIS teams were pretty heavily affected by this. Oh, they at least looked like, you know, their energy level had been cut a bit and people probably hadn't had sleep, etc. Because I have to say, the real dream is this. It maybe touches as well. I thought I'd bring it up on what you were saying before, but how you don't realise how big the esports bubble's gotten. Mate, the dream really would have been this if it could have happened would be that somehow Na'Vi did, you know, soldier on, win the tournament, and Simple could have done, like, a different version of that speech. And I'm not joking, mate. If, if somehow they could have won that tournament, that's why I said that tweet, like, look, no one will blame if they, if they don't succeed, but imagine if they could win. Because I tell you what, I actually think in the modern day, mate, if you could say it to random plebs who don't know anything about esports, you know in esports, the best player in Counter Strike is from Ukraine, and he just gave a speech, actually, like, uniting people about that whole thing. I think that could have actually had reverberations around the world, mate. That could have been even bigger, potentially. I, I, I imagine that will be what esports may be 10 years down the line you know you could see the impact we could have yeah but then even even well not more than that because it didn't have the same number of eyeballs but i watched some a simple stream because obviously they're stuck they can't go back i don't think people realize the gravity of the situation they're in as a team and how honestly this is going to effectively cut short one of the yes what what could have been uh, forget uh, all the era talk basically yeah. yeah it's over yeah you know, because they're stuck in Poland in a hotel right now. And if they go home, if they could get home safely, they then could never, they couldn't leave. Yes. The Ukrainian players couldn't leave. Yes. There, there was a chance. They're they even would... obliged to join the military, essentially, yeah, as yeah. far as I know, right? And and that's where we're at with it. That That yeah. is that that is why you're not on an island anymore. Because the best player in the world, if he returns to his homeland, could go to the front lines and be killed. Yes. Like that, if that doesn't, if that doesn't cut through the fucking nonsense for five, like for just a moment, I don't know. I don't know what it would take for people to realize the gravity of this, but he was on a stream anyway, he's streaming from his hotel and he was talking about how, when it happened, you know, he, he made a point of telling the story about how the Virtus pro managers and players who again, Russian players, they were crying and hugging him and saying, like, we don't know why this is happening. We don't want this time. This is simple talking. And so at a time of understandably, yes, divisive rhetoric, simple's the guy that's like out there trying to fucking like make these powerful statements to try and keep shit, you know, uh, uh, as sensible as can possibly be in mad times. No, he's doing a very good job. Oh, dude, like, you know, whatever, you know, like I'm writing an article about it at the moment because I do think it's a pivotal moment, not just in his career, not just in his life. I think in our sport, I think we've seen the moment. This is like, a, 
Muhammad Ali esque kind of yeah, moment yeah. where it was seeing a player transcend the sport and become about an issue that that's bigger than that. Um, but you know, it's like, listen, we, we he nearly never got to be this man. The community were, were going to destroy him because oh, of sure. all the mistakes and stumbles he made across the way. Now they deserved critique, but you know, I mean, pe- pe- people were out for blood. Even people he admired and looked up to, Absolutely. guys like Markalov, you know, yes. like so there's a lesson there if anyone wants to learn it. Oh, it's a mega redemption arc, if you think about it. It's like essentially, it's the best possible redemption arc. He actually became like a fucking like a respected figure in the community and the best player ever and yeah. won everything. Although yeah. then again, that infers what we're talking about now. Here's the other thing to say about this whole thing, right? So the other aspect is this, because I'm trying not to make it so we're just all over the place, right? In terms yeah. of like the blast statement they made as well, then the next topic becomes the whole issue of like, should they do these? Essentially, it's a type of sanction. Let's be real again. You are sort of just saying, because remember, this is where people have lost it. If they'd have just banned Russians, by the way, essentially, that's actually some sort of, essentially a, a form of xenophobia. That would be a different matter because you're banning only Russian owned teams. And the implication they didn't say this in the fucking stupid statement is they have direct ties to oligarchs slash or Putin slash the government, which, by the way, if you say that, no one's going to complain except people who are very firmly on the Russian side. So I even think that's an absolute like free win you've just missed there completely and yeah. you've made yourself stupidly look like you might actually just hate Russians which is probably the dumbest angle to take but in doing so this is the problem I have right since if people will know from shows I am someone who is something of I, I don't know if idealist is the right word but I am someone who thinks for example that you should do things based like on a principle that you believe in whether or not necessarily by the way it means you succeed in the outcome I think in my opinion the ends don't justify the means basically mm-hmm. so I would say this if I, the problem is I'm not actually a, a knowledgeable enough to know, do sanctions actually work? Do they ever work? Do they work in certain cases? Do they work against certain types of businesses? I don't know enough about that to know whether sanctions themselves tend to be inherently bad or not. I will say, just from following basic Western media, it seems to depend on who the victims are in terms of the media report. You know, if you're in like a country that's not the US or the UK, they would say sanctions on Iraq cost people their lives. If you're from somewhere in the US, I'm sure they would claim it was necessary and that was like the, the tactic they were taking. So I can't know if like the actual real world sanctions. So my problem is this. If I'm talking beyond just being an idealist, though, if I go into the reality of the practical nature of this, Richard, not only, like I said earlier, do I think it's not even going to matter. And as far as I can tell, I don't think Russian players, whether they're in Gambit or Navi or any team, I don't think they'll actually be able to travel beyond a month or two from now. I don't know how long their bike visas last. But even worse than that, I also do not think it's the case that, um, fuck, I lost my thought for a second there. Let me think, where was I going with that? Let me think. Hmm. What was my point going to be there? What was I saying just before the bit about the Russian players? Do you remember? Yeah, you were saying, so you went, um, let me let me just wind it back in my mind. You were talking about how there's bigger forces at play. And because you're an idealist, it's got to be about the principle. Oh, there you go. Yes, yeah. you've nailed it, right? So in practical terms, I also think this is just stupid. As in, I do not think, I don't even think there's a person in Blast or even the community actually would believe like, I won't, yeah, obviously, it's a bit in bad taste to say gun to your head, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. forced to make a real, essentially, if you had a lie to set the test, I don't think anyone would pass the test that goes, will this actually, in any context, stop the war? I don't think in any, I don't believe anyone actually thinks that banning, like, a no, player we, from, we, uh, from yeah, playing we, for Pro will, in any context, stop the war. So my problem is that. It's also that, in practical terms, what are you going to accomplish, you know? Yeah, and look, I, I think I think the overall attitude is that it's like it's just important to walk in lockstep together on. Yes, that, right? they, it was more about the idea of the message they yeah, were sending. Sure, yeah, I just think it, they scoffed it personally. No, I mean Blast definitely fucked it up, and as I said, like they've got to get new PR people in. Like I'll help you. I mean, like just reach out, guys, because you've completely fucked that up. I mean, like it's it's and and. It, it's gone. It, the, it's not even clear to people. It's not that it's no, just no. gone over. Badly. A lot of people even replying seemed confused as to what it was yeah, saying. Yeah, exactly. Um, and look, they did add as well. There was someone um, that also sort of added, like, oh, yeah, well, actually, we're canceling the CIS event because uh, the company that was going to run it 
won't be able to now. And it's like, well, you should definitely include that as well because that kind of softens the overall message. It also makes them seem cynical, though, doesn't it, Richard? Because mm. essentially the joke is this. If you want the order, here's the real order, right? Blast make their statement. I read the statement and interpret it as they, by the way, have written it. Not necessarily how they intended it, but how they've written it as like, so you're placing economic sanctions on Russians, Russian teams. And effectively what you're doing is telling those players, you must leave your team now, otherwise you can't be a pro player. And then as you say, a guy who was previously, up until recently, an admin for Blast, basically sort of said like, well, you know, we play was going to run the qualifier and they're not running it anyway. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Those aren't the same two things. What you're saying there is like, well, look, we never could have had them in the tournament anyway. But you're taking that and going, we will not allow you to be in the tournament for very virtuous political. It was like, well, that's actually, again, you're just, in that scenario, what you're saying is you tried to just steal a W that was, wasn't even yours in that scenario. Yeah, and, right? and fucked it up as well. Yeah, and, like, and yeah. didn't even do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely bungled it. So it's like, yeah, it's, look, I mean, you, so blast do that. There's all this confusion. And then, of course, because, you know, this it, it's now we're all meant to be in on, on this together and we're all meant to be, you know, we've all, you know, the world of sports has made an agreement. We're sports. We got We got to go with it. Obviously, ESL comes next. Now, ESL absolutely aced their statement. Yes. And in my opinion, aced the decision because they made an important distinction, Blast did not. And that is that, of course, that the players who were being hurt and penalised by this, um, you know, were having their careers disproportionately affected, sort of commensurate to their involvement. Um, and so they, I'll, again, I've got their statement in front of me. I'll, I'll, I'll read it. They said, we're all shocked and saddened by the Russian invasion into Ukraine and hope for a swift and peaceful resolution. After monitoring the situation, we are now putting these initial set of actions in place. Together with our partners and employees, we are currently working on actions to support the people suffering from the current tragedy with donations to the UNHCR, paid time off for employees to volunteer for humanitarian relief, and paid time off for affected colleagues. Now, by the way, I want to say, I want to especially underline this point. That, to me, is... Like it's it's a travesty. More people aren't actually ponying up some money, right? Like we've all benefited, you know, from the you know from the Navi bump. Oh, right? of course. In esports, yeah, it's been you enormous know? for CS:GO, yeah. right? So they carry us in the online era of people. So don't know. these businesses, in my opinion, like you can afford to fucking yeah, yeah. cough up a buck or five, time. yeah, and fucking send it out there. There's loads of great fucking AIDS organizations. You've got the Red Cross operating in the area right now, the Ukraine Red Cross. You can go and get that. That, that, that that's out there. But there's a ton. There's a ton of charities operating right now to you know help people get access to water, medical aid. You know, obviously everything's cut off. Buildings are being bombed. You know, there's supply issues. So there's a ton. And I haven't seen, you know, listen, talk is fucking cheap in situations like this. And I'll give an example, and it's the worst fucking example. EA, right, who make FIFA the most, like one of the most profitable video games oh, of out there because of what they do every year. They just rinse you for like probably a thousand pounds every year. If you want to have a competitive fucking FIFA ultimate team, it's a notorious fucking absolute pay to win load of shit. Right. And they make hundreds of millions off it. Do you know what they did to support Ukraine? Here's what they did. They deleted all of the Russian teams and the Russian national team from the game and said, we stand with Ukraine. Take some of that fucking money, you scumbags, and send it out there so people can get help. But no, you won't do that. So ESL have done that. So credit to them for being the first I've seen, the first big esports organization that are taking the sanctions, but also making donations and enabling people to go and support them. Uh, second, they continue. On the upcoming ESL Pro League, which at the time of recording this starts in five days, we made the decision that organizations with apparent ties to the Russian government, including individuals or organizations under alleged or confirmed EU sanctions related to the conflict, will not be allowed to be represented. Currently, we've identified two teams, Virtus Pro and Gambit. 
We recognise that players are not complicit with this situation and we do not think it is in the spirit of esports to impose sanctions on individual players. The Virtus Pro and Gambit players are therefore welcome to compete under a neutral name without representing their country, organisation or their team sponsors or their clothing or otherwise. Furthermore, out of respect for the situation, we have decided to pause all scheduled competitions in the CIS re region and they can be played at a later point in time. We will monitor and evaluate future competitions and make further decisions. You, you don't get better than that. You're not going to see a better reaction to this situation and better messaging than that the entire time. It, they've nailed it. The wording, tonally, it's perfect. The decision-making process. Because, look, at the end of the day, Gambit do, you know, the, the players, have they, not earned, have they not earned the right to compete in Pro League? Of course. You know? Virtus Pro, those players, have they not, and we know the oligarchs, we know the sponsors, we know Usmanovs are fucking piece of shit. And he and and he owns Virtus Pro, even though I'm sure in his portfolio he probably doesn't even know what it of is. Of course, yeah. But it's still him. It's still his brand. Every little help, so to speak. I get it. So, um, you know, I think that I I, I hope the players do that. I hope the players because I know it's a tough time. I know that they're probably emotionally charged as well. You know, they should just come up with a name and and compete and do it in neutral white shirts you know and, and and go and 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 do that uh and i'll also just say uh as well you know i like the messaging in that they said yes we're pausing tournaments in the cis region but we will play them at a later date That's there is excellent yeah there's a future element to it we can yes. get through it we can get back to a better place hopefully so yeah i mean for me Top notch from ESL. And, and as I said, I, I hope Gambit and Virtus Pro, the players, are able to play in this uh, upcoming ESL Pro League season. Yes. I mean, look, we'll get to it in a minute, but I suspect, sadly, just because of the location and what maybe might be about to happen with Russia, if people haven't noticed, depending on if Russia, let's say, adds other countries or territories, there may be a scenario where it's not just Russia that gets like restrictions put on them. And so, unfortunately, there may end up being a world where maybe Kazakhstan and other countries themselves get added to this list. You can't know, unfortunately. If people yeah. don't know, there was like an attempted revolution or coup in Kazakhstan recently. So, mm -hmm. no one knows where these things are going to stand in a few months. So, it might sadly be the case that maybe for the this tournament, like the VP players can play, but who knows? And we'll talk about that in a second, though, because I actually yeah. think that's the biggest news of all. And unfortunately, people haven't really picked up it. The one thing I'll say is this I'll actually echo all that you just said. I think ESL did a great job on the statement. In isolation, I think they're all totally on point. They've nailed it. They've actually got the most, I would say, even humanitarian approach to yep. replacing these restrictions, blah, blah, blah. My one problem is this I said it on the Pop Flash one, but I'll say it again because I, I did a tweet I thought was a better version of it. And people think this is what about ism, Richard. But this oh, is where people. People have got to learn. Like, what about ism, by the way, has just become the new midwits version of saying ad hominem to every single thing that someone says in an argument online. Like, guys, you've got to know what the word means when you apply it. It's not just to get out of jail free card for any argument. So the reason I bring this up is this. One thing I hate, people might know right now, is the idea of things being unfair. I will say it, it's sort of been my own little, like, battle with life itself because life is inherently unfair. And what the fuck does fair even mean? So I guess for me, fair means what you might naively imagine to me. It means that in certain circumstances where there's not a reason that individually you treat people separately, you apply the same rules equally to everyone to this extent that that is possible without obviously, you know, human bias and things where you have to make a decision between two things and it's just you have to pick one, right? The problem I have goes like this, Richard. It's This is like when game devs, this is the analogy I'll give, you know when game devs decide, that guy said a racist thing so we're going to ban him, and this guy over here that was really inappropriate like, sentiment he politically expressed, so he's just suspended but then it's like a chinese player and then they go and you're just sat there going holy fuck well any minute now you're gonna have to ban him right you're probably gonna have to you know he's gonna have to be suspended from ti and when you realize they aren't unfortunately to a fan they would probably spin it the opposite to me richard they go look isn't it good for him that they got the other guy they nailed him at least okay yeah they couldn't get the chinese guy because maybe they have you know maybe they have like ownership issues they don't want to upset china so maybe maybe in the scenario what you got to think for is okay the one guy got away with it but they got the rest right so that's good but my problem is i then feel like if you're the guys who got punished you can actually turn around and go so you're just punishing me just because I'm not Chinese, basically. Like, it's not actually for what I did. Like, you're not actually consistent. So similarly, this is what I would say. And I'm, I mean it as a real piece of food for thought for people. And I'm not 
Think about it, idiots. I'm not saying right now that I, that they have definitely done something. Otherwise, I just give the example. But I'm saying you have to, in my opinion, if you're going to be ESL and blast and take an action like this, you have to, in good faith and good conscience, be able to answer this question. And the question mm-hmm. goes, what would the governments of the United States, China, or Saudi Arabia doing with connection in some context to esports get their teams banned? If you can't answer the question, by the way, guys, there is nothing. That is just the answer. Because the problem is this. If it was as simple, it's the point I'm trying to make if people don't understand. If it was as simple, Richard, as saying, well, if they did the same thing that these teams had done, that's fine, by the way. If you really believe that, I'm cool. I'm on board with it. As long as you, I just suspect, fuck suspect. I just know, I viscerally know in my being from seeing the dealings of people in esports in the last 10 years of behind the scenes stuff, they wouldn't do it with certain one of these countries I've named. I obviously threw the Saudi Arabia one in there intentionally because it's ESL in it. Like, But the point is, like, I find that just a little bit gross. Like I say, it's a messy yeah. topic because, yeah, on the one hand, you surely you do want to catch the criminals that you do, but I, I, something about that just, it rubs me a well, bit the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, no, and like it, they, I, you know. I, I think it should, and people right now are going to say, what about ism? Yeah, and, of course. And, and that's because they, like you say, I don't think they really understand what, what about ism is. What we're talking about is we want a moral consistency and we set, you know, we set these precedents in esports. We see, see, it seems we set new precedents all the time now. Every day there's a new precedent for a thing yeah, that yeah. happened and we and we, and we all fall in to agreement with it. And it's like, fine, I'm fine on going with the new precedents. I actually like this energy, right? Because, again, people are like, oh, Richard Lewis is a fucking bigot. He's right wing. Oh, you don't know me at all if you fucking think any of those things. I'm a fucking peacenik fucking lefty. I never, but by the way, go back in time and look at when people like Alish Uzmanov came in and bought Virtus Pro. And look at what we were saying. We oh, didn't want the, the first people on the whole. We case, didn't want the money in the first place. Yes. We don't want blood money in this motherfucker. We just we just did this with the fucking Saudi Arabian public investment fund. We don't want it. I don't want it. I, we won't take it. We've been offered it repeatedly. By the way, we've been offered it's so. Bad, much, isn't it? I know. We've been offered so much. Terrible money that we've said no to because, like, it's just not worth it. It's never worth it when you know where it's from. Yes. You know, so we didn't want it in the first place. That's fine. But, you know, look, the, 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 the problem you've got here is, and I, and I totally agree with you. Where, where next now? What happens when America invades, uh, the, the Middle East, a Middle Eastern country? And I say when. I mean, it's, it's just when at this point in history, right? Yeah. Because the, 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 the chances that I get to the end of my life and it doesn't happen again, uh, you know, I, I, I probably have to croak like inside of a year, I think. Like, because it's, it's, it's their way. And look, ESL have got to get rid of the US Air Force as a sponsor. That's just got to, that's the first thing. Because you've aced this. And we can all be in agreement with it. But when that messaging comes out on a website and fucking U.S. Air Force logo is there, do you know how grotesquely offensive that is to many people around the world? I've been looking at the numbers. It, 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 it's, it's horrifying to actually look into it. So I, I pulled some stats from um, you know various humanitarian websites. Between 2016 and 2020, in Afghanistan alone, there were 3,977 civilian casualties from airstrikes, an estimated 40% of those casualties were children. Fuck that. Fuck all of that, by the way. Fuck all of this exceptionalism and normalizing that. Right. And it's not what about ism. Oh, Richard. Yeah. You're deflecting. When you do this, you're carrying water for Putin. No, we're not. We're saying it's all bad. Yeah, it's exactly. all bad. Yes. It's all bad. I don't want babies being fucking drone struck because some cunt wants to fucking get points in the midterms. Yeah. What we're saying that. is it ain't cool when our side does it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. You know, I went and marched yes. against the invasion of Iraq back when back when I was young and thought you could fucking force these cunts to fucking change the horrifying things they yes. do. Right? And 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 I'm, so I've never supported any of this shit. So listen, that's n- root number one. Let's get rid of that. Yeah. Let's not make people whose countries have actually been victims of bombing campaigns by the organization. I have to do a fucking ad read for it. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, that's a quick one. We fix that. You don't need the money anymore, ESL. 
Get rid of that. And then next, listen, we're, we're, we are going to have, uh, 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 next time it happens, we're going to have to have a talk about what our role is going to be in pushing for peace and pushing back in these countries. And when it's America, we're going to have to do it. And when it's China, because Taiwan. It's on the horizon, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I'm not, so I'm not saying, guys, if you make it political, it's a never ending slip. I'm not saying that. Let's yeah, do yeah. it. Let's make it political. Let's use our voice and let's use our energy and let's try and make positive changes through what we do, through the medium of what we do in any way that we can. But if you are not there on the next one, I'm going to fucking notice. And I'm By not going to tolerate that. One thing I, I've just remembered I wanted to throw in this section because it's absolutely relevant to what you're saying about the orgs where there was an implication, in fact, some people overtly said it, of like part of the reason why this has to happen is because apparently in lockstep, everyone Russian in esports was supposed to wake up the day after this happened and just decry Putin and say they were against the war overtly. Now, I have a problem with that as well, Richard, because if there's one thing I hate in the world, it's when people tell... I mean, people should understand this sentiment because it's the, it's essentially the nature of what we all hate about war is that some cunt sends another guy's son to die. He doesn't go with it. Here's the thing. If he went with him and his kids, listen, that's a totally separate discussion, right? Just about, like the idea that he sends someone else's though is like, that's fucked. Everyone gets that on some level. Well, similarly, right? The, the fact that Richard, when he was young, could go and protest against the Iraq war and he wasn't thrown in prison. He hasn't had his life ruined. He wasn't blacklisted for the rest of his career. If you lived in America, Everyone should know this. Who voted for fucking old Biden? You could literally say on television, Donald Trump is a dictator and literally, you know, like corrupt and a puppet of a foreign regime. And nothing ever happened to you from the government or even actually socially beyond maybe people send you mean tweets. That's about it, right? That isn't the case for people in Russia right now. I can tell you this. I've looked into this and I have contacts there. There can be serious reprisals for even yeah. normal people protesting this. So can you imagine if you're some guy, spoiler, by the way, as much as we want to pretend esports is big, a Russian pro player is nowhere near the level of like an oligarch or something. Like if those people speak out, it might be more than just getting a few likes on a tweet. That could have very serious impact on their life. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is this, it's not should they do it or not. That's for them to decide but you know so i just said that is for them to decide you don't sit in whatever country you're from and go go on then say the most outrageous statement potentially for right now where you are in your life pay all the consequences just because otherwise if you don't i'm gonna lie about you on the internet and say you're on the other side like, this again that's again if we're talking about the idea of reuniting people not being the dickheads in this scenario that's a bit fucked up as well guys no, Come it, on. It, it is at the end of the day logically if though if some of those russians themselves are against the war them saying nothing, by the way, is effectively saying they're against the war, you idiots. In this in this setting, that is like saying that, essentially. I mean, look, the, the one thing I'll, I'll add on... And fair on, play to anyone who did say, obviously, you are yeah, actually, a, yeah. to some degree, a hero, yeah. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And and and, and there are a lot of them, Gambit players, Absolutely, even yeah. at the Valorant team, the CS team, you know, the, the Virtus Pro players, Virtus Pro coaches, managers. You know, I don't think people realise like just how bad things have got in Russia. Right, like uh, with, with this, with this weird new dark turn, Putin has took these last few years. You, you don't say to people in North Korea, exactly. Yeah, you know, just fucking come out and condemn. No, it, it it's it's it's. I'm not saying it is North Korea. No, no, but they've just locked up fucking eight thousand peaceful protesters. Exactly, they're having the human rights, and you know, they're not getting due process. You know, they're making up fucked up charges to keep them off the streets. People are having information stripped from them as well. I don't doubt, by the way, there are some people in parts of Russia in an information vacuum. Oh, absolutely, of course. With the, yes. with the websites that get back. Yes. This is that uh, we've got to wake up to the fact that some problems, they don't have elegant solutions. It's, no, ne no. it's never as easy as you think. And I agree, I, you know, props to all the fucking players that spoke out. And by the way, listen, if you're a fucking cosmopolitan person that travels the world as an athlete, I think I can make a safe bet which side you're on. Absolutely. And where your sympathies lie. So it's 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 fucked up, you know, like the the the, the way we've been handling this so far. Put the pressure where we put the pressure where it needs to be. And we're doing that, sure, with these sanctions, but let's keep sight 
of the enemy and let's keep sight of the goal and let's be let's be morally consistent as well let's do we we can we don't have to wait and see what the mainstream does first we can make our own decisions now in in our industry we don't have to have blood money we don't have to tolerate uh, uh, regimes that commit atrocities we don't have to do any of it we don't have to do any of it you know so I'll just quickly get to some of the reaction because there seems to be another misconception as well. I've seen a lot of mi misinformation on Reddit about this topic. I saw that Villa piece of shit sort of implying and spreading around that like, oh, look, Gambit won't condemn. Like Gambit literally put a statement out saying this is terrible and they want peace. Which he, he literally said he wanted them to like essentially by name call Putin out or something yeah. mad like that. It's like... Like, that's how you know that this guy wasn't acting in good faith. Come on, man. He just oh. wants you to put yourself in danger there. Yeah. No, and then went and told another lie, by the way, something about fucking, uh, you know, uh, Tarkov or something, and, and that got fucking... This, guy, this guy's a bigger piece of shit than even I could fucking account it's for. Wild, it? He's using fucking people dying for fucking clout on Twitter. It's fucking bonkers. Like, fuck him forever, by the way. And fuck anyone who entertains his bullshit anymore. This is a bridge too far. But Gambit have put a statement out, right? And they've said, we want peace. And it's like a lot of people on Reddit are saying, yeah, well, you shouldn't let them play until they denounce the war. They're denouncing the war. Gambit have done that. Just saying you want peace, as I just said, effectively in the Overton window of where they live yes. is like saying, fuck Putin. That's, that's almost what they're saying, you idiots. Yeah. Like I say, just to even say anything against it is enough. But, you know. More than enough. <laughs> but, but it's what I mean. But it's not about that. If you're one of the people who think it's just about them renouncing it and they're refusing to do it, it's not that. They are renouncing it. The players are renouncing it. The org's renounced it. It's about hurting the oligarchs. It's about hurting the money people that own the organization by hurting their business interests and the interests of the sponsors that support their business interests. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to financially hurt them to a point where they decide to make a change, you know, like we did back in South Africa with fucking apartheid. And none of you are fucking old enough to remember that. I am. Financial sanctions. It can fucking work. So I get it, right? But then Virtus Pro, oh fuck me! Like, they obviously hired the Russian version of the Blast social media guy to write their statement, didn't they? Fucking hell. Not even do like, this is like one of the worst things I've ever seen. So first Man. of all, like they put right because here's what people probably don't know in CS, Virtus Pro. Uh, I mean, like, look, any sympathy I could have had with the org, fuck that. That's gone now. This because this is their second bad statement. Here's what people don't realize, because obviously in Dota, they've got a, a, a sizable presence course, and they yeah. were being told, you know, listen, the, you're not going to be uh, you're going to be disqualified for the Gamers Galaxy Dota 2 International Series in Dubai. And basically they did a statement going, we were told uh, and, and, and we were given an ultimatum. And it goes like this. I'm reading from their website. Either your club issues a public statement regarding the situation in Ukraine or you get dropped from the tournament. They went as far as threatening to announce our players have COVID, even though all the tests are negative, only to prevent them from playing. As an alternative, they offered us a chance to renounce our tag and jerseys and play without affiliation to any particular club or country, right? Which is the thing we're all saying is good. Virtus Pro were coming out and saying that they won't do this initially. Right, it's fucking, it's it's crazy. They uh, they said Virtus Pro will not uh, fall for this intimidation. We won't take off our jerseys and won't tolerate this pressure. We speak for ourselves when we find it appropriate. Short term interests and emotional outbursts are not what we base our public statements upon, but rather long term strategy in the spirit of the club. Let's make plays, not war. That was the first of March. That is a fucking terror. You again, garbage. Absolute garbage. Serves no one. Hurts your players. Hurts your fans. Hurts the sport. Hurts the scene. Hurts your reputation. And ultimately makes it look like you don't give a fuck about what's happening. And then you follow that up with today. It was the day, the fourth when we sit down to record this. And they address the ESL statement. And I'll, 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 I'll read this. Lord, guys, fucking stop. On March 2nd, ESL notified us that Virtus Pro and Gambit Esports have been withdrawn from ESL Pro League Season 15. It was shortly after ESL requested our club to share the legal and financial information with them 
country of registration, ownership and partner details and whether or not our affiliates are subjected to sanctions. By the way, unquestionably you are, unless Usmanov doesn't own you anymore. It's all over the fucking news he's being sanctioned. We replied with a full and comprehensive response backed up by all the necessary paperwork. That inquiry was a mere formality. Our answer didn't mean to have any effect. ESL publicly announced that the reason for our disqualification was alleged connection to the government and companies that are now subject to sanctions. However, there was quite different wording in private texting. Even though we are not connected to the government, we make an impression of it being true. We can't tolerate this kind of behavior. There are no rational reasons to suspend us from playing in tournaments apart from prejudice and pressure from the outside. It happened in Dubai with a We Play event, and it keeps on happening. ESL offered our players to play under a neutral flag with another tag and no club jerseys. ESL refuses to communicate with club management and prefers now to speak directly to the players. We are facing a prime example of the cancel culture. However, in this case, there are no ultimatums that are supposed to push us towards certain actions. That's why we won't, won't respond to this aggression with aggression of our own by forbidding our players to play in this tournament. They spend lots of time to become pro players, and unlike some tournament operators, we are not ready to invalidate someone else's efforts. Our players will always be the, the Bears. If they decide to play at the tournament, we support that decision. So, you know, they, they, they move that dial themselves in a matter of... They basically of imply, if you say the Bears, because people will know you refer to mm, that as yeah. Pro the logo, yeah, yeah, they can sort of play as a mixed team. Mm. By the way, spoiler, this is the thing I can't handle. We're at the point now where, like, people have taken all... Like you said about what about was a myth, they've taken some of these terms so far beyond parody. Like, we're at the point now where, like, if this was right now, when we were in 1999 or whatever it was, when fucking all the Serbian shit, like, would Milosevic be in the dock and the Hague going... Bloody cancel culture in it, like it's gone mad. Political yeah, trend, it's yeah. gone mad. Like, what is this? Yeah, what is that cancel culture? Yeah. Shut up, Milosevic. <laughs> hold this out. Exactly. What is that shit? Right. How is that cancel culture? No, like <laughs> sanctions against your owner, a Russian oligarch. The cancel culture. What? <laughs> it's so stupid, isn't it? No, a fuck Vertus Pro. Like, come on. Like at, 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 at this point, like, listen, Gambit put out a statement just. Seemingly apropos of nothing, by the way. They did a good job on this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 very difficult, like you say, for all the reasons you listed. Credit where it's it, it's Absolutely. due. I, I I hope the players are able uh to to play in the pro league and everything else and and you know what whatever with the org. I mean it's tough with the owners that they have and everything else. Vertus Pro, man, like even I, like just fuck this. They're trying to deny, by the way, that there's like any tie there, like and, and that, oh, we've got paperwork that proves it. Probably a fucking litany of fucking shell companies. Absolutely. Like, First thing I thought, mate. Yeah. yeah. So fuck all of this noise. And if people don't know, by the way, that also, uh, based on, I actually know people from this region. As far as I know, that was always the story they said about Putin, for example. Famously, he supposedly does like have millions squirreled away. But again, yeah. he doesn't do it in like his own bank account. Obviously, Richard, you know, he has like either a shell no. company or a re relative of his or a guy, you know, knew him in the past. Job. Like, yeah, the premise is they, they're smart enough to put a couple of layers of abstraction in here. Yeah. So... So, I mean, listen, like any sympathy I can have with the org now has completely gone out. And I'm sure the players are just thoroughly embarrassed and ashamed of what their org's doing and the messaging they're putting out there. And they're the ones who are going to have to carry it next time they do play. Yes. But here's oh. the thing I think we have to get to, though, because as yeah. I say, I yes. really think I haven't heard any other show hit this point, Richard. Mm. Right. To my knowledge, this is the current status. As far as I know, you can travel if you are Russian, mm. like, for example, as long as you have like the valid visas to go. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's trickier. Like you can't, for example, I would imagine you almost certainly can't fly from like Moscow to fucking mm -hmm. Warsaw or something like that flight is obviously off the table but in theory as long as you go to the countries that still allow Russians to fly there you can go from there to wherever this event's been held if you have the visa the problem people haven't thought through is I, I am suspecting they are not going to issue more visas so this is the key detail and this is a bombshell that's why I can't believe even Reddit hasn't figured this out still even though ESL and Blast who remember are not the fucking ones with the jurisdiction over the world, just their bloody Counter-Strike tournaments. Even though they're saying, I will allow 
Jim, Monacy, fucking keep going with the list, Electronic, all these players. Even though I'd allow, late, I'll allow these players to play in my tournament, just not for their all. Well, spoiler, when their visas run out, if this continues, there's sort of like an embargo on the world and you can't fly out of Russia, then there just won't be any more Russian players for real just in any of these tournaments. Mm-hmm. And as I just alluded to, this is way bigger than people think. This isn't VP and Gambit. This is Monacy. That's from G2. Gone already. By the way, just bought for 600k. This is Navi would only have simple and bit. Like, this is going to be an enormous impact on Counter-Strike. Like, think about that. That statement alone essentially just rips out, like, half the top 10 boys. Like, and the Navi one especially, I still think that fit hasn't dawned on people. That The whole discussion of, is there an era? Will they back? It won't even matter. It will go on. Maybe they can play a tournament or two now. But I've, this is another thing, by the way, I actually hope that these TOs speak out on. Like, if we're, if, we're, if essentially these players just won't be playing, like, let us know so we can sort of process it. Don't make it just, like, sneak up on us before the event that they won't travel to, because that's going to be even worse if in two months you find out as it really is just no Russians in Counter-Strike anymore. And again, from the pure Counter-Strike historical aspect, that is obviously a travesty, no matter what you think about the current situation or whether you think sanctions work. That is a tra- If you were a fan of Counter-Strike, the idea Navi splits up tomorrow is a travesty. The idea Gambit never gets to play those lands is a travesty. The idea this new VP lineup probably splits apart and they don't... St- These are travesties. Yes, obviously yeah. there are bigger tragedies and travesties in the world. In the context of Counter-Strike, this is going to be enormous, guys. Yeah, it, oh, it, it's going to be a real seismic shift uh, in every... In, you did it uh, lightly every... when I say before, like I, when I invoke the premise of an iron curtain, that looks like what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and look, you know, I, it's it, it's it's one of these things where, like, I, I saw some rhetoric coming out of Belgium, obviously where the majors uh, going to be oh, okay. uh, uh, held. The Secretary of State for Asylum and Migration... Uh, literally said, I, I got, I got the quote. Uh, he said um, that you know, with the, with the, we're going to be suspending visas for Russian players uh, right now. Russians aren't welcome here. So that would be three of the current major reigning champions would not be playing in the next major as it stands. Yeah, if 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 they if they were to require a fresh visa to enter yes. Belgium and compete, irrespective of what happens with the qualifiers. Again, listen, I'm not a total expert on this area, but I will say, as far as I know as well, when they get those visas, there's no way they last that many months. Remember, the major's in like, what, is it like May or something? Yeah. I think that's too long away, guys. Unfortunately, it sounds to me, I know, I don't want to bring people down, but it's the reality, so we better start fucking adjusting to it. For real, we might just be about to just upend half the top 10. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, and not only that, though, I mean, for, for how long? You know, but Who what, knows, right? What, what people have to realise is that even if the war were to stop tomorrow, and you know that's what we all want, outcome-wise, we want it to stop as soon as possible. There's some things now that are in motion that it's going to take maybe even decades to wind back. Absolutely, yeah. You know the 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 what this what this is going to do in terms of like, you know, Russian isolationism. It, it's it's massive, you know, and it's like again, it it, it goes beyond you know, the, the, the world of sports, but you know, it's so who, who uh, may, may, maybe for CSGO, this world we had, maybe, maybe it's over forever. Maybe it's over for the lifespan of the game. That's- Especially when you consider CIS was the emergent region of the last yeah. few years and was about to make us have, I'm not exaggerating here, guys, the best year of Counter-Strike ever. It, look, we had that on the cards. Like yeah. I said about that fucking IM playoff bracket, it looked incredible. It looked like you had six champions playing each other. So look, the good news is this. We do still have, because of the sheer amount of top teams, we're still going to have a very good top 10. We're still going to have great teams. But like, let's be real. When you you know what you know everyone always gets super touchy anyway, no matter what the context is. If you ever say there's an asterisk on an event, you know, mm. like you have to realize I don't put an asterisk on like Cloud Nine winning the Boston Major. Yeah, I think it was a fluke, but they didn't do anything wrong. Like they just went no, to yeah. play. Yeah. You know, the difference would be if like uh, here's the example: if obviously like Guardian before that final had been like, oh, I'm ill and I can't play. That's an asterisk. Like I give you an example: the Luminosity one is an asterisk for that reason because Guardian was ill and he was the main star player. How can there not be an asterisk on three of the ma- reigning major champions? Not even yeah. being allowed to play in the tournament like if you win that tournament you yourself are always going to wonder will we actually better than Navi we can't know can we we never got to fucking play them to win the tournament like that that will essentially as far as I can tell that's going to be like a, a real black mark on the major unfortunately well I mean yeah Again, through it, no fault of valves obviously yeah it's 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 going to be it's going to be impacted and like we don't even know by the way 
to what degree or what's going to happen. No, no. And, and, and obviously, I mean, look, it's like I said, uh, you know, but, but again, again, this is this is what I mean by being like it's it's beyond anything we've ever talked about in this fucking, you know, me and Duncan have been in the business what like 30, 36 years combined. We never talked about anything like this in esports. No, before. no. As you say, we were always too small fry anyway. Yeah. We'd never been on the table, would it? Yeah. Uh, you know, the management of Narvi aren't going to be putting out any statements soon. They've they've oh. they've gone out there. They've gone back home. So that you know, they they are literally in the Ukraine. Sorry, I keep calling it the Ukraine. My bad. I'm a boomer. People don't know that's Forgive a famous me. thing back in the UK. For some reason, yeah. in our speech colloquial, we always yeah. used to say the Ukraine. Yeah, so it, it was... took a lot of us a long time to get out. I had, Dude, I had it... that for loads. No, but years also now. as well, I am just a fucking mad boomer. I was talking about <laughs> Czech Republic the other day, called it Czechoslovakia, oh, which hasn't go. existed okay. for fucking God knows how. I, I need go. to buy a fucking globe basically and put one in, up, up in the office and fucking get get up to date. Um, but you know, the, the, like so, and, and how can you even conceptualize like something as like trivial as like, well, we better make a statement about the future of the team and find out what's going on? Like, fuck me. Like, so yeah, this thing, it's like, listen, obviously, again, to reiterate before we start talking about the 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 tournament, uh, yes, we're not saying this is a tragedy, it's not. Tragedy it's hyperbolic, happening. obviously. Yeah. It's a metaphor, isn't it, when I say that? Of yeah. course. Yeah, you know, exactly. like, uh, tragedy is what's happening in Ukraine right now. We get it. But obviously, from from just from our tiny little world of Counter-Strike, uh, you know, it's it's a, it's immensely sad, you know, and, and, and it's sad for a, a ton of reasons. So, yeah, I think uh, that sort of covers it. Let's get yeah. into... Katowice now, as you said, tantalizing uh, prospect when we got to the uh, playoffs before uh, the situation escalated. And didn't this shit even happen like the day before the playoffs began? Yeah. It was something mad like that, wasn't yeah. it? Like right before. Oh, yeah. 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 And, you know, it changed. Uh, obviously, it changed a lot of people's preparation. Out- I mean, it, cha- it changed the whole tone of the fucking tournament yes. itself. I mean, I, I even suspect... I mean, by the way, remember, Poland, they're the, they're the people taking the bulk of the refugees. There's been a million yeah, displaced sure. people because of this conflict, most of which have gone to Poland because, obviously, it borders. And got to say, the Polish government have been incredible in extending support uh, and they've been helping bus people. Yeah, yeah. And, there, would and, even, there was even a thing I saw that those countries, including Poland, were allowing you to come even with like your pets, even if you didn't have documentation from them. Yeah, so obviously people yeah. are worried about leaving stuff behind. You've seen silly stories where people stay for a bloody cat or something. Yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that they were sort of extending the arm like that. Yeah, yeah you know, and, and they've led they've led the the... You know, they've led the world in how to sort of respond to this. And it is being mirrored. You know, there's talk right now in Britain about us just dropping any of the necessary sort of credentials you would need to get the paperwork to come here. And we're going to just house refugees from the conflict. Um, and other and other the European nations are going to assist as well. But obviously, when that's happening just down the road, uh, you've got. You know, it, there is a weird atmosphere. And as I said, I thought the fans carried themselves. I think oh, we didn't get as big a crowd as we could have had because no, of this. No. Um, but still. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it just completely changed the tone of the event, obviously. But, the, uh, you know, it, we still got, you know, incredibly under the circumstance. We still got some good games and we still got some good fucking stories. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, like, I'll just start with, uh, you know, kind of, just the obvious stuff, and we can kind of like just pick various bits out. Um, phase overall winners. I mean, I felt that they had a chance. They were my pick over on Pop Flash, the DeSoto podcast that we do. Um, and uh, you know, I mean, obviously, again, asterisk mitigating circumstances. Phase had to use three different lineups over the course of the tournament due to uh, COVID. People were popping for, for COVID on the team. First Rops, then Rain. And uh, JKS got a much longer run out than he thought. He got to play six matches. And incredibly, despite using a stand-in, they didn't drop a single map in the playoffs. They went 7-0 and um, to, to, to win overall. Now, the final was epic. I'm not doing it justice by saying it was a 3-0. It oh, was Lord. as close to 3-0 as you're ever going to see, probably. Um, and just, 
you know, a, a tremendous ever. But we'll was start... epic for real. Oh yeah, yeah. But we'll start by talking about Phase. I mean, obviously, so many little different parts to it. Carrigan, the king of using stand-ins. JKS, the standing himself on a redemption arc, little boost to his career, although not as much as the fans on Reddit are saying. Uh, Brokey, top player at the tournament, established himself as an elite level orper, and of course, Rops and Twists. Finally, it does look like we've got a Phase fucking lineup that will be up there. Uh, over the course of 2022 as being the best team in the world. Oh, I thought, yeah, generally, this is an example of where, even though I know fans for sentiment reasons, if you win the tournament, they'll say every player did his part and was good. Or you see, that's not always the case. You know, you sometimes have someone actually like underperformed or just in nominally did their role. Maybe a guy overperforms as the MVP. This really was an example of where every single active member of FaZe Clan, including Rain when he was there, when obviously it was Rob to be replaced, did their role. Absolutely. In fact, you would probably even say some of them, in the cases of like Brokey, JKS, actually overperformed. They probably gave you more mm-hmm. than you should have had for them. So to me, like this was just like, this was like some other movie, mate, this run. I mean, the idea, yeah, you drop, drop a map, everything's super close. You're beating, even the way the bracket was made, it's like the bracket wanted Carrigan to go to the final. Like you got Gambit and Heroic, the two teams that were amazing online, yeah. but they haven't quite proven it to us in big stadium events with crowd and you put Carrigan there. Yeah, sure. You made you handicapped him a little bit by giving him a, a stand in, but this guy's made for that moment, isn't he? To be fucking mid rounded on stage and the other teams losing their shit. Cause they can't call a mad online timeout with the coach yeah. talking to you all the time, you know? So perfect storyline. Then you look at all the players, like when Rops was in the team, he was doing very well. Rain did his job, but he was in the team. JKS did his job. Brokey way overperformed, but they needed it at this event. Quite frankly, who knows if they win some of these series, if he does, and I actually thought twists, interestingly, I could see when he actually be moved some of the roles when they brought JKS and I could see he actually looked like someone sacrificing, sometimes being a bit more of an entry. Also, by the way, I, you can tell twists is the most comfy player of the phase, guys, because, mate, how many fucking clutches does he either win or just barely lose? It's like he's in every, every time he's in one now, you think he can win him. Like in every one just, just he had huge impact oh, mega, over, the, over the course of the uh, uh, tournament. Yeah, um, so I thought all in all across the board, what a mega, what a mega performance by this team. I just thought like the, I, 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 the the problem is it was so epic. I struggle not to just go like too far and just make it too hyperbolic. So yeah, I think it's so so cool the like, Carrigan story that he's done this. Essentially, he's done it his own way, hasn't he? He's had his own yeah. unique path to success, not just the international roster, but winning with these stand-ins. I'd even say there's probably a real lesson to be learned. By the mind, he's done it three times now. From what's still possible when you have a stand-in, I'd even say NIP showing this to you right now. Just because you have a player, because remember NIP and Fears have the same scenario. Your main star player goes out of the team. You bring in a standard who's not as good. Everyone else, let's be real, it does sort of give up. These guys didn't, so fair play to them. They battled on. I would just say the only downside of the whole story is I feel like there's no real satisfying outcome to the JKS thread of the story, though. Because realistically, he ain't joining FaZe. Like, spoiler, even if they wanted him to. Like, everyone in FaZe fucks heavy with Rain. They all love him. He's a player's player. And Carrigan, especially, you notice he went out of his way to basically say on stage and elsewhere, like it's like he actually regrets that Rain didn't get to play and sort yeah. of sharing this win. So the problem with that one is you have to understand, guys, like just emotionally, I don't think there's any world they're replacing Rain. So my issue is this. I do feel like wherever JKS goes now, he's probably going to have to play for a team that's not quite as good as he is at the moment. Like he actually probably deserves another crack, but I just don't know how many mm. teams there are you can really go to now, you know. But fair enough. Great story. All the ones I've seen the fans talking about don't make sense like people are saying like oh gee maybe it's like i don't think he'd want to be there i saw some people say drop mouse uh uh, you know uh, sorry drop nbk from mouse and bring jks in again i don't think i don't think they would want to pay him they don't strike me as the kind of org that wouldn't make that kind of move where you're gonna have to pay someone a sizable salary or you know something along those lines. It's certainly not where they are at the moment as an org. Like, here's no. the thing, I think they could do it, but the problem I have is if you've got this whole like pipeline of people from your academy squad, they probably want to use that angle. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, that saves you money if anything like we were talking about. Yeah. Well, I mean, it turns out as well, by the way, if you were going to make any permanent replacements, as they've already shown by using people from the academy team, that's the, it works. You've already got them on yes. the books, you know. I'm not saying they're as good as JKS, maybe. But I mean, it it work it works within uh, and spoiler because I noticed a lot of people missed this dude. Mm. They made the guy who was their academy coach their head coach now, so yeah. I'm pretty sure they're committed to this idea of using the academy talents for obvious reasons. Yeah, you know. 
So, I mean, um, the other one, everyone seems to be going, oh, he, this fanatic is selling Broland for loads of money. So, JKS will go. JKS would absolutely not want to play in that squad whatsoever. And by the way, that squad is a fucking bust. I've been watching them struggle in these RMR qualifiers, these open qualifiers. They're losing to teams like fucking Illumina that they lost to today. Yeah. Like, the, the, the management, of, we'll talk about this with the smoothie thing after we've wrapped up Katowice to talk. The management there has completely fucked everything. Like, it's, it's shocking. It's shocking about that handled it but anyway so i mean listen i could see him i could see a world where you know team liquid or maybe even eg those would be cool pickups yeah that seems like the obvious one because i mean look like real talk like breezy's still breezy's terrible breezy's missing um you know as i said i don't think shocks has found his feet in team liquid and i don't know how long they're going to be willing to wait keep in mind you know it's already we're already in march this year and you know we're all meant to be revitalizing our fortunes and they crashed out of a big tournament super early oh for sure so you know how long are they going to be willing to try oh by the way one thing i should add though is this Mm. one thing i actually thought was very cool and this is probably the detail about jks's performance with fears that's the most misunderstood is when he replaced rops they did just give him rops his spots in most cases and obviously he was the most obvious like roll for roll swap Mm. when he actually replaced rain i noticed dude you even saw it in the stats he was entry and he actually became an entry player like this is why carrigan is just a miracle work because spoiler that suggests to me by the way he had complete buy-in from jks and so, yeah. even though, look, I don't think it's the best suited to do that role. I do think actually it implies he can potentially be a little bit more versatile than we saw before. Because my whole take from the JKS and complexity thing is, uh, this is genuinely my whole like top-down resolution take of why it went wrong. I've heard from the stories that he was one of the people when they noticed they had all this role overlap who basically agreed to sacrifice to sort of take one for the team. But in doing so, he tanked his own game. So my vibe with JKS is this, because he is a pretty soft-spoken guy. He's not like a big ego. He's not like, he's not how I present Nico. He's the opposite. But he is, he's is. he got the skills of a star player. I get the vibe. To some degree, you do have to sort of build the team around him and just give him what he would need. He's not going to demand it though. So I think he's got to have the right team where he can do it. But, I th- but he at least showed maybe he could do a slightly different role. I just get the vibe in call. I don't. I think their morale was just shot the whole time. And that seems like it was a bad scenario for everyone involved. Yeah. And and look, you know, like I say, the 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 situation with JKS, like, I, I, you know, I wish the fans would stop hammering this fucking narrative about how, like, you know, I saw a Reddit thread the other day. Uh, it was an article, how JKS saved FaZe. That seems like a bit of a... There's, there's one thing that Carrigan said, and I don't think he just said it to be nice. There is a world also where the real fears like with J- oh, JKS might have won. won this tournament. I can't know it, but I, I don't think it's impossible when you look at how the games went. You know, you look at the numbers, like, yeah, okay, statistically. He also uh, didn't do crazy numbers like people are imagining. It was more no, impact with your eyes. That, you know, wow, yeah, didn't expect exactly. Him to get those he games. had some yeah. very impactful rounds I agree. And, and, had a, and had a solid stand-in yes. performance, which is Put fire. it this way. All I know you will agree do. with this. The people who were saying MVP, it's like, you're out of your motherfucking oh, mind. Bro. No, in no world is he the MVP. Let's not even go to there. Come on. It's like I said, man, you're, <laughs> if, if you think he's the MVP, <laughs> you're a fucking fan of anime. You're not a fan yeah, of Yeah, exactly. Sports. Like, fuck exactly. you. Like, for real. I mean, I, the, the worst one I saw, and I didn't tell you this one before, I saw a motherfucker on Reddit unironically say this. Uh, they said, I know Brokey was the MVP, but I voted for JKS. On each uh, on ESL's poll because I wanted <laughs> I wanted Brokey to win MVP from HLTV and JK uh, no, it's, the MVP is the MVP you man I know, I know why are they like this what is this what are you talking about I thought it would be like what the participation know. trophies all around then like, I know like, what is that he's what? just trying to rig it so they all get all the MVPs oh man right. it's fucking no. madness like absolute madness so um yeah I mean look. The, I, I agree. I, I, I think the way things went, uh, like we'll talk about G2 now, the way things went in that final in particular, there were a couple of notable, you know, issues. Uh, one of which was, I mean, like Nico, who was posting like unreal <laughs> God tier. Yeah, 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 was posting unbelievable God tier stats in the run up to the fucking playoffs. I didn't really, yeah, yeah, you know, he did well in the, in the playoff. He did okay, right? You know, he wasn't like mega, but but in the final, very conspicuous by his absence. And you know, when you look at like it's a nineteen fifteen, it's a thirty one twenty seven, it's a sixteen fourteen. If 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 Nico had just been a bit more, you know, and that's maybe a little bit harsh, like, but you know, he wasn't quite on the level. But, no, but here's the thing. I don't think it is that harsh. I'll give you the reason why, Richard. 
all the analysts just spent the last two and a half months trying to tell you Nico's better than Simple. He's the best yeah. player in the world. Yeah. So guess what? Simple has that same pressure. He has to sc- Simple and Zewu aren't allowed to ever have a bad map. That's the reality of those guys. And we all sort of co-sign that because of how insane they are. But mm. if you want Nico to be in that category, I think he deserves yeah, it. He's, also got, he's got to take it just like the others do, you know? Like, uh, uh, people were banging on Zewu when he had that bad fucking performance. Yeah, that's and that's fair. You know, it, it does come with it does come with being one of the greats. You know, w- one thing I'll say is it definitely overshadowed the fact that like Hunter was fucking oh insane. he was mega one not he yeah yeah I thought, he, I thought he had a great final obviously Munizzi as well by the way this this might be one of the best fucking breakouts I've I think ever it looks seen. mega yeah yeah I mean like he's 16 um he's in a team with tenured players many of whom have a reputation for being a bit highly strong or particular let's say uh, it's his first big LAN event. It's his first like event in front of a crowd. Obviously, we've got the situation. We've just all done the first hour of the show about. Um, and just icing his veins. He's just had an amazing oh, mad, breakout. Yeah. Might be one of the best debuts of a 16-year-old in esports, period. You know, like it, I don't think people get it. That 1v3 he did on Mirage was like, that would be fire if, if that was an online clip. That was on fucking yeah. land in the arena in Canada. By the way, Canada is also one of the most iconic stadiums. Remember, this guy would have been like fucking, let me think how old he would be. Well, yeah. It would have been like eight years old when they first yeah. had like EMS1 kind of eight with Burst Pro. That like, yeah. the, the idea, that's like, so, if you are Monacy, that's some Roy of the Rovers dream level shit where you're just in the cup final and you score the winning goal or some shit, isn't it? Like, yeah. You can't even conceive that someone would hold up under pressure like that. So, I mean, there was plenty of positives for G2. But, you know, I I think that because obviously X has popped for COVID as well. There's another one. (laughs) If I lose that course again, mate, and I have like all these circumstances and my coach in there, I would. That's why I say it's one of the rare cases where I do think you can almost take like a moral victory. If I'm G2, we're in awesome position, boys, aside from the monetary visa issue. Like, this could be our era. We could run this fucking shit. Yeah. I mean, like, so, you know, fears fear get that one, but I, but I, I definitely saw enough from G2. I think they're going to be in Absolutely. contention all, over, over the course of the year. And obvious- Also, here's the other thing as well. Just the, with the way that, you know this, the flow of a match isn't, a, like, every round isn't identical. For yeah. real, right? Fears, loads of times, potentially, we're going to get knocked out in that, like, double overtime. Yeah. You know, G2, if G2 wins the second map in that mega overtime session, that's a totally different final immediately. You know, yeah. like, it's game on right then, isn't it? And, and you know, and, and they nearly did. I mean, there was so many fucking yes. it, there was so many insane clutches uh that just seemed to come up and this is you know and, and also as well i mean look you've got to give credit to carrigan who had like one of the worst individual performances of his fucking career absolute nightmare against narvi and you know he 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 was much better he said i'm going to be better yes. next time around and certainly he was so i mean look you know, yeah, that's just one of those. That's just one of those ones. And Carrigan's even said it to me. I remember famously he said it to me after the Boston Major. We're in a bar, you know, we're all there. And he says, sometimes you just don't win. You know, it was it, in, in his mind, he was just zen, like calm about it. Think about the Boston Major and how, how much sure. of a nightmare that is in terms of it being a missing ring. He said, sometimes you just don't win. And that was that, sipping a beer. Okay, and that that you know it was G 2s turn to find that out. I think had X Taz been behind them, I've got to believe they would have made an adjustment and took Absolutely. one of those maps with them being as close as what they were. And so if if that's true, it's not all doom and gloom for G two. No. Lots of lots of positives ahead. And as I said, they're going to win trophies this year. There's no there's no doubt in my mind about that. Yes, they're, they're going to win. That, that team will win trophies this year. Absolutely. If they can actually use Monacy, as in if he doesn't have a visa issue, this team, like I say, I think this team looks like, mate, this was the first LAN. They already looked even good in the online. So, like, mate, they, they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Like, if there is a world where, I mean, obviously, I'll even add in as well, they're one of the only teams, bear in mind, they've only got the one player. If they actually did have to go without Monacy, look, you're still going to have problems because he's a really good player, but you at least have enough of the other core pieces. You could still rework it to be a competent team. Though. You could still, you won't be as good, maybe, but you could still be a very good team. So if they can have Monacy, though, yes, for real. Like, if, if all the teams right now play as they are, G2's right there with Narvi. Like it's mm. going to be Navi G2. Let's hope Fears, Vitality, you know. Like, but the difference is G2's at the top of the pack with Navi for my money. Yeah, totally. I'd even maybe put them slightly ahead of Fears. I don't know what the real Fears would look like in that scenario. You know, I haven't seen it yet, really. 
Now, obviously, I don't want to analyze too much like the teams that were kind of impacted uh, by the Russia Ukraine situation. I'm not going to talk about, you know, don't give them a pass for obvious reasons. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, but it's just they're playing and, you know, they're not playing in the same reality as everybody else, you know. Um, it, I wouldn't, and even though fans won't get this, I wouldn't begrudge them if they even just said we're not playing the game. Well, look, you know? so here's, here's, here's a point because we can segue into a couple of other talking points. So the first thing is, should the tournament have gone ahead at all? I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Well, I can, if, I can go either way on it, depending on which you want. If it was me, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, I had a similar feeling. If it was me, I wouldn't have done it. I, I mean, like, listen, like, because of the night, right, it's not just that there's a asterisk. It's like, okay, let's imagine what we would have done if there'd been a real bad COVID breakout. And every team had people like sick. Yes. What would we do? Would we blunder through with stand-ins and make it a bit of a joke? Last minute registrations, flying people in. We probably wouldn't, right? No. We'd probably put it on hold and say, unfortunately, due to an outbreak of COVID, we're gonna have to fucking reschedule. So if we would have done it for that, we we gotta do it for this. And so uh, it's not fair. It's not fair for Narvi's legacy. By the way. That legacy might be sh- shrinking. Yeah, it's true. The, the, even a, dude, you can even argue it's it's unfair even to the teams who aren't from there because their whole thing's like, right, now go out and just crush the dreams of some people whose families are all going through. It's like, who wants to face that? Like, yeah. if I'm G2, I want to feel like I beat Navi for real and like, you know, good for me, not like, oh, yeah. fucking Jim, they had that. And, situation. you know, by the way, like Carlos, obviously, we oh, all did a very good job as well. Yeah, he was. Hey, have you noticed this? That I want everyone totally. I want people to really carefully examine the situation. Notice the people you've been told are the bad guys and are the dickheads oh. that ruin esports. Notice how they're they're all the ones who've nailed the tone and haven't been inappropriate and haven't been insensitive and have tried as hard as they can to be as inclusive of everyone. This is why, like, you can't you can't just be going off silly reputations when it's important things that matters, guys. I thought Carlos killed that. By the way, I even thought what an incredibly magnanimous thing it was for him to essentially say, spoiler, his team did win the game, that, like, he, I think before the Na'Vi game, he even implied that he didn't care who won the game. He just wanted the fans to have a good time. Like, that's a... You might think any owner would say that. A lot of them wouldn't. No. And they certainly wouldn't mean it. I guarantee you that. Uh, well, not not only that, I don't think a lot of owners would kind of have the like wherewithal to un like to even. So some people are so wrapped up in their own little bullshit. And this is the thing: people accuse Carlos of being like some fucking like ego. You know, he's a narcissist. All of this stuff. You know, it, it, not for my money. Like he does love the fucking business. He loves his org. He loves he loves the sport. He lo- he loves bringing more. He genuinely, you know, he fucks with the fans. G2 do fan engagement like no one else. They've got social media like no one else. They look after Dude, he has like one. no one else. You'll like this because it's just how ridiculous Carlos is. There's an account and it's called asking underscore G2. And it's a guy who just every day begs Carlos for merch. And he actually replies daily to this account. And he makes up fresh reasons as to why he won't give this guy merch. But they're all hilarious. It's like, you know, oh, yeah. I have to go and do this. Like, like the guy is, here's the thing. People wish they could cynically make fake PR like this. It's incredible. Like the impact mm. is not is God's here. The, the guy's just a fucking natural at it. He's just the, probably the best order I've ever seen. Jack from Cloud Nine, maybe not right now, but in past maybe could have. These are the rare people where they're hands on and their whole personality just permeates the culture of the company. Like if they're essentially, if you like G2 the company, you like Carlos. I don't know how you can not. Like to me, they're one and the same. Yeah. And again, I thought he'd, he'd like say a great job and, you know, made the point that look, we all know how horrible it is. Maybe we can escape for a moment uh, via the medium of a game that we all love. So, you know, that was that was like really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, you know, o- overall, I like I don't want to I don't want to say we shouldn't have done it because the fans would have been affected. But I, I, I you know, I, uh, the 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 players couldn't focus. Oh no. Understandably. And understandably so. And because of that, for me, how can you say and how can you say how can you how can you make now like how can you expect Navi to go out there and perform? How can you how can you expect No, that? this is something I even realized myself because I if you notice I'm always very, very careful if I ever tweet on this particular topic. If anyone's going through a real life extenuating circumstance, death of a family member, birth of a family member, some sort of complication with someone ill in your family, I always try to do a tweet that the gist of it essentially goes like 
on the one hand, if you if you you know you have to quit the tournament, you can't play, you play badly, no one will blame you. Of course not. Mm. On the other hand, if someone actually succeeds in doing so and sort of like is able to bear it, aren't they? Isn't that heroic? Doesn't that go beyond esports? You know, mm. the problem I have is this: I realise that actually is unrealistic to expect for an entire team. Though one person might be able to do that, one person might just have this. Like Dupree might be able to play a major and win it when his dad's going through or died. I can't remember what the scenario was. I think he might mm. just be ill at the time. I can't remember which way around it was. Someone might have it where the family. Yeah, one person can do that, maybe one or two. But the idea that like five people affect that and coaching staffs, like I think I think the cumulative effort's too much. I even think to some degree, even the one guy that might have been able to hand it, he's just going to look at the other people in his team and it's going to affect him emotionally in that sense. So yeah. I actually think when you look back now, it was naive to really think these teams could have just played a normal game and we'd go, oh, I didn't even notice there was anything off with them in the game. Like, And then you add in, we had three of them. I think, yeah. unfortunately, when I look back now, it, it, I hope somehow they have an amazing match, but I realised that wasn't really plausible. It would no, happen, no, no, no. And, and, like, listen, you know, obviously, the reality is we're finding out as well as, like, had we postponed it, uh, there's not even a guarantee we would ever finish it. Yeah, that's true, actually. That could have been even more crazy, right? So, yeah. So, I'm not saying anyone did anything wrong. No, no. It's just, for me, I I, I wouldn't have, I would, I would have just said, look, this is, like, so small by comparison, let's just fucking pack this up. We can do this another time. Uh, and I would have, you know, given told the fans, I, I don't think the fans are going to be upset, you know, like you will honor you next time, like you know, we can maybe six months, who knows? Um, so that's that's what I would have done, but I don't know. And then the other question this is a slightly more light hearted one best of fives, I'm out on them after this. I have one pushback on this, right? I know you do. Here, yeah. No, here's the pushback though, okay? You have just done. Listen, I don't want to annoy you too much here, but you have done what essentially Pimp always does. So that already is a fucking cursed <laughs> right, well, No one well, likes well, that. Well, Even well, Pimp's going, uh, really? Yeah, well, here's yeah, why, yeah, right? Because what Pimp will do is this, and I love him, but I'm just going to say, like, the fact that I love him is why I'm going to say this. Okay. Say someone, like, I'll give you an example. Say Simple had just had a map where you had like four kills. Mm. Pimp would then do a tweet that would be like, sometimes we have to question him. Can Simple cost his team the game, though? It's like, well, obviously, he just had four kills that year. All I would say is this, right? I know what you mean. I've seen some best of fives myself that went too long. If people don't know, I actually did a watch party when Gambit played that land right after the major where they had an improper yeah. game that went five maps. And I, it was torture because they went with 2 zero and then still won the fifth match. I was sat there like, so you just dragged this out for three hours extra. Like, this, this is a shit experience. All I'll say is this, though, is like, Bear in mind it was a 3-0. That is about as long as a 3-0 can ever conceivably last. Like, that is a unique type of a match, right? You don't get that kind of best to find that often. No, but this it's is a pretty extreme example, right? Yeah, but this is the problem. You set rules and formats based on potential. True. Right? And so as a result, I mean, like, so I'm thinking about I'm thinking about it like this. Let's imagine a world, by the way, where let's say somehow Navi claw their way through to that final, and it's kind of like a similar, you know. But, but think about on top of everything they're going through the mental shit like six that was a three maps and it was it was six out over oh, six hours a long time yeah yeah it was over six hours right so you got that problem and keep in mind there could be, there could have been two more maps after that sure you could have conceivably had like someone insane like a 10 hour final that's bonkers. That's I will cool. also say, in the era that we've been in the last year or so, where you get more saving and obviously the games are closer, I do think best of five has suffered badly in this particular economy. Well, like, yeah, this this, this meta. I've yeah. said this. Yeah, because you never why. get a sixteen two, do you? Like, no. If, you, again, if, you, you in a, if in the best of five, you know, I win sixteen two and does two, and then you win sixteen four Inferno. Yeah, we can have a best of five then. Every map can't be five five overtimes, obviously, of course. Yeah, and so that's why, you know, I was like. Let's let's fucking you know like 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 in this like just get them off the table. Like I I, I was saying this ages ago when the economy changes come in because it just felt like the games were going to run too long. I feel like every yeah, yeah. game's a sixteen fourteen these days, uh, you know or thereabouts. It's like you know it feels like a, a comprehensive victory these days. You do see the occasional sixteen five, generally sixteen ten, sixteen elevens is a comprehensive win, and it's like bro, that's long enough anyway. Like. Just best of threes for me, because like like I say, this could have gone on for fucking 10 hours. I don't think it helps anyone at that point. I don't think you get great Counter-Strike after six hours played, let's say. You know, like it's diminishing returns. So it wouldn't even have been epic had we got those other two maps. It would have been epic in concept, but in, sure. in, in actuality, it, it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been. Um, and also, here's something to consider, right? We broke viewership records for a non-major. 
this kind of eater. Here's the thing, though. Like, look, uh, technically, by the way, obviously there's a world in which if that had been a best of three, those might have been the first two maps anyway. I will say sure. that. Yeah. But that's also, by the way, this is where I've actually noticed in esports, we're just the same as sports in that sense. Have you noticed, now, if you really want to break records, happened at the major, they had the Nuke game, happened here, they had the Mirage game. What you need is you need a game where it's like in the old days, like someone just rings you up, like, you got to tune in, watch this game, you can't believe they're coming back. Like, they're coming back from a 20-point, you know. It was like that. I can tell during that overtime session on Mirage. Dude, everyone in eSports, on Twitter, you could see it. There was just people coming in and going, what's going on? Like, because obviously the whole attention was on, like, what an epic game, it's not ending, clutch after clutch. Like, I saw so many eSports people who were from other eSports and were jumping on board and going, Oh, what's going on? Wow, I can't. So many LEC players that people don't know were tweeting. Wow, this game never ends. Like, that was essentially if you want to break records, it can't just be the match. You have to have like the right teams, the right circumstances. In this case, the storyline was great with G2 and Carrigan and the standings. And then, yeah, I think that overtime game is what made them get that fucking record, mate, because that was the game where like everyone watched that final, I feel like. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, it was, you know, obviously like it was popping off and people were like, you know, doing that thing where all the rubberneckers that are watching yes. CS for like the first time, you know, oh, wow, CS is the king of Eastwood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know. You it's know, the way they're I, telling us that, I yeah, know, exactly. I know. Yeah, we know. Only been fucking with for 20 years now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's bloody, it's what do you bloody... do? Rocket League? You know, yeah, like, give me a break. It's the, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's it, it, and, and like, listen, it's great. It's great that it captures the imagination. But here's my point within a broader context. The, the last thing anybody would want, let's say they were tuning in and they got that first map and it's epic and they got that second map and it's epic. And then the third map goes the way of the other team. Then the next two maps kind of blowouts and not very interesting at all. Uh, like casuals aren't going to stick around for that. It's very, that you yes. can have too much of a, a good thing, yeah, let's yeah. say. And and so, you know, I, I, I feel like um, that showcased everything a best of five can be and how epic it can be. But if I had that kind of five maps, that would have been like the cake was made entirely yeah, sure. of frosting. And you're the only human being I know that thinks that's a good idea. It's because, like I say, to me, essentially, I, I'll just frame it with that, how you... That's literal, by the way, no, given the metaphor. How sense. you characterised it, I'll frame it that way. Essentially, I am willing to have a bunch of boring files for the few that are epic like this. Yeah, essentially, but, is that what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, that's I, why I always use the analogy yeah, of the when UFC. when you say it like that, that you know. it seems like a reasonable statement, but the reality is, like... I'm not a very reasonable person. <laughs> no, I'm, never I'm, I'm something of a hardliner, believe it or not, in <laughs> right, esports. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, so I, I don't know. But, I but mean, you have to realise, remember, I even crafted the real position, which I could totally justifiably, even morally argue, that essentially I will even say to the player who played in the game, you're wrong, and I want you to play two more maps. Like, I'll even say oh, to him, please, I'm so tired. Like, I don't care, get in there, you fucking pussy. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but that's actually, that's actually interesting because that's another uh, point that I've made before as well. Literally never met a player. No, no, most players, players hate them. They yeah. really do. They, yeah. I mean, yeah, and actively hate them. Not Hence why different. you've had all those cases where the two teams agree <laughs> and they play the best of three instead, etc. That's yeah. happened so many times, yeah. Yeah, yeah best of fives are not the friend of the players. Um, so I think, is that, I mean, because like, oh, well, let's talk a little bit just about Heroic while we're here. All right. Because uh, I, I think I think it is worth talking about. Obvious... By the way, have you seen this clip? Essentially, if you well, just go to like Twitter and you know in the gifts section, you can search, they've got like esports right. stuff. If you just put in like Cadian or something, mate, there's like one of the first things that pops up from what I remember is like, you know, he's done a million celebrations on player cam, obviously. Yeah. He's got one that I'm not, you're going to think I'm like exaggerating because I'm going to use the best example ever. I'm literally on it right now. There's one, I'll see if I can find it, where basically- Is it, is it the one where his eyes roll up in his head? It's the one where he's going like, dude, it's like that famous Hillary Clinton one. You know, the one where she was oh. stood next to like Bill Clinton and she goes like- yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like so over the top pantomime that it's like a legendary, an infamous gift. There's one that's like that where he's just, it's like, so like, that's why I did the joke on Twitter because it's just what Cadian's like now. I said, the joke is when Cadian opens a packet of fucking layers, which are walkers, <laughs> if he opens one of those and it's a third full, this is how he reacts because the joke is every packet's a third full, isn't it? Like, th but mate, on the one hand, I actually know, unlike other people, he really is one of these fuckers, if you're a fan, who he is just a guy who is that excited about everything. Like He's not actually faking it. It's just that it's like, it does seem almost like... Here's what's crazy. Oh, uh, so I'm literally looking at it on Twitter, right? So out of the gifts you can choose on Twitter, he's got like... One, two, three. Oh, it's the four, second five. one. The second one's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, Look yeah, at this one, yeah, yeah. where he, is, he literally just goes like... Ah. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm looking at it. It's, it's, it's so over the top. It's, it's got the one where he kicks the fucking advertising and throws the chair 
There's so many, isn't there? So yeah. many ridiculous well, I ones. I had no idea that Canadian, Canadian gifts were so fucking mainstream. If people want reaction gifts, this is the fucking guy that's making them for you. There's loads. There's so Holy many. Shit. Yeah, there's the one where he goes and boots that background. Yeah, yeah, mad. I didn't even know. So, um, Heroic, obviously, you know, I think you were saying they were like potential sleepers for the whole tournament. Yeah. Especially. Re- Let's be real. The problem Heroic have is this, mm. right? They really can seemingly beat anyone, just not if it's in the big match, sort of, you know, like in some ways they're almost giving me like fucking vibes from the old TSM with Carrigan. Like, it's like, so you could beat that guy if it was like day one of the group stage. But if you're on stage and it's the semi final, and for, by the way, fuck them if they're ever the favorite. If so anyone goes and you're the one supposed to win, it's like you just know they're going to capitulate at the moment. You feel yeah. like they always let you down, you know. Yeah, and it's like, uh, you know. I do I, notice as well, Pimp, unfortunately. You know, Pimp. He did also do the curse tweet where it was sort of like, I noticed everyone's sleeping on them. It's like, I'm winning. Like, here's the thing. He's totally right, Bob. He's, he's <laughs> Pimp. The universe is just like, fuck you. Like, yeah, then it's no. getting 2 0 slapped by a standing of God's Yeah. <laughs> nah, you can't get a break, Pimp. I know, no. mate. All right. But, like, but let's, um, let's, let's just talk a little bit about <laughs> it because, like, so. You know, I, I, that's I, up there with me. I'll give you a little comedy since people are fa- obviously the fans of this show will appreciate this story, right? Everyone what? knows my notoriously bad track record with predictions. Well, well when you I do literally walk, oh, I'm metal. I am my fucking eyes. Like, Here's I'm one where I did it. Every are you ready? Low key, I did it. I did. I am kind of eats it. Are you ready for why? Because on the I do a small show I do with a guy who used to be in HUK, HUK Rich. He's now called Rich's Wrath on Twitter, yeah, right? Uh-huh. And on this show, it's sort of like a debate format or whatever where we take it's called side select. Yeah, I've watched time. some of it actually. Yeah, we did one, and at the end, to keep it fun, we do a thing where we do like a bet on a different out game, and obviously we have to take opposite sides of it, right? Mm-hmm. And we actually had picked Faze Gambit for this, and I'd taken Faze, but this is where I can't ever get a break from the universe. So obviously, the second I heard that they're not using like the real lineup, and especially that like fucking Rops or whatever was, out, like, oh no, it was Rain and she was out or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I immediately went in the group chat. And I was like, look, obviously we can't do this as the bet anymore. Can we? It would be unfair to anyone, win or lose. And then obviously he was like, yeah, you know, we'll roll the bet over next week. And then obviously the joke because they just won everything, didn't they? Like, so I actually would have won that with the fucking standing, but I've just done myself. I was, I tried to be fair, and in doing so, like, I could have just waited till after, couldn't I? Just gone, oh, but it's unfair though, like, the standing had to play, but I've done myself. Happened to me, mate. I, uh, so obviously with the new sponsor, Midnight, right? We, um, we, I was going to do a watch along of the finals, uh, and, and bet on the games, right? And, and, you know, like, it's an interactive, you know, way to get yeah, a sponsor yeah. across. And then obviously, um, when when the invasion happened, I thought this is really like it's inappropriate, you know. Like obviously everyone's like upset and sad, and there's me like now, but you follow along, you know. Like so, bet responsibly. Uh, so I, so I, I I shelved it because I just thought it's like it's really like crass. But I still because now that I'm free from the talent pool, I fuck it, I'll I can have a flutter, you know. So I did really well up every bet I placed in the playoffs. Cha-ching, 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 okay, come all on. the way, winning them all, right? Winning them all. And so I'm like, right, no problem. I'm going to go big on uh, – it's because even though I predicted FaZe to win <laughs> – You better G2. On the fucking morning uh, of the final, I got up and I went, mate, this is still beating this G2. Is the- I thought the same thing, to be fair. I thought G2 was going to win All that, that game, scratch yeah. that I'd made, yeah. I just put it in, all in. Oh, so then you were just watching all these overtimes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Please. And yeah. then, like, you know, Rop's having to win, like, 1B4s or whatever, to, like, win the round. Like- no, but, but, well, that would have been all, hilarious watch along I know that. it would have been as well. <laughs> I like, I know, while, I, while I was watching yeah. it, while I was watching me just get <laughs> fucked like that. Right. I was like, I had another bet, right, on uh, Liverpool to win the fucking Carabao Cup against Chelsea. Now it's just null and void because it was nil nil at full time. Right. Liverpool won on penalties. Oh, it doesn't count. 11, the bet, right, but it I doesn't see. count if, right. you, if it goes to extra time. I admit, I got rinsed that day. <laughs> uh, all that money gone. Yeah. Like, you literally predicted every playoff and all of it gone, gone, erased. That's why you bet responsibly, guys. I know. Totally, fucking hell. That was, that, was a, that was a bad beat, that one. Anyway, um, so yeah, look, uh, what I want to talk about Heroic is like, you know, I, I feel that they're at something of an impasse in terms of their level. I don't know what it is, but these big games in front of crowds really seem to bring out, you know, we end up with a different Heroic. And I really like the lineup. I would I, I would never advocate for like a change of roster or anything yes. like that. Um, but, you know, very surprised in the game against FaZe on Nuke. 
uh, which was Heroic's pick. And remember, Heroic, of course. Oh, this was like, one of the best in the world. Yeah, well, they, yeah, they were. Sure. They were, you know. And it's for like sure. Kadian had an absolute nightmare and went missing. And to be fair, most of the players did, with the exception of Tezes. And so you're starting to ask questions about, you know, what kind of, you know, Kadian's a great leader, a great motivator, a great protector of, of these young, you know, these younger players. It, can he deliver, you know, can he, he's the opera, can he actually deliver what he needs to deliver, you know, or is he in that weird fallen territory where you have him because of his brain and, you know, a, a baseline level, but you're never going to get a mega performance out of him. And the other question, of course, is like Stown, you know, this fucking guy who's had like a breakout year last year, really stepped his game up to the point where we're talking about him as being, you know, he's the star of the team unquestionably, but also he's like, he's a star in terms of European, you know, Counter-Strike, uh, World Counter-Strike. And he's not... um but yeah, I've yet to see him have a game where like heroic are behind yep. and struggling and Stown goes super sane and they win the game. I don't think I've seen a game like that. It, not one that really resonates in my mind. So this team sort of just, they, they're just flat. Like they're just a little bit flat. They're still very good. It's still clearly yeah, yeah. a top 10 team. Uh, and with everything that's going on, you know, that they're, they're, they're probably going to be <coughs> a little bit in the rankings, but you know, I, I, I've got to say they disappointed me here. I agree. Yeah. The problem is, as I said, they are the team that if they essentially like with online play, if this was a scenario where there are no additional variables aside from the match, you just essentially play in like a fucking hermetically sealed room with no crowd, then would be absolutely like they would win championships. Potentially this is a fabulous team. They are very well structured, very well balanced, nice mix of young talents, couple of older players. Like so it's, it's a banging team all around. There's so many things to like about it. The problem is I agree with both angles. The IGL, look, if you look at the raw calls he's making in other games. Like I said, I agree, he's a good IGL. Looks like he's actually one of the better ones in the world. One of the problems is this, though, and this is why I actually think the Glaives and Carrigans of the world don't get the credit they deserve. Right, making the same genius call in a meaningless normal game is very different from making that call on stage and you know, like you're, you're at map point for the opponent or something. You have to call some ballsy, either yeah. like four spy or some crazy, like you know, in one in a million chance this round work. That's way harder, and that's why I've always thought people don't realize, like when people like Glaive and Carrigan just have a whole series where they just do that right the whole time. That's an IGL version of being in the zone. That's like when Simple hits every fucking no scope and wins like all the one. Like there's a, there's a level like that for IGLs. And if you're on the other side of it, yeah, that's the problem. This is the problem I have with the Cadian style. <clears throat> that style of play that they seem to play on T side is so tricky. It's so trying to be cute with the opponent that like, if anything goes wrong, that's going to fall apart. If you miss time, you call. If you just get nervous, if a player fucks up the entry when you've got 10 seconds left, when you run on the bottom, like, there's so many things can go wrong with it. So I do think they're having an issue team-wide on that one. And then I agree on the star player angle. But here's the difference. I always say with that heroic G2 game at the major in the semifinals, for my money, heroic won the series, but Nico just decided to win the last map. Stown doesn't do that. I agree with you. There's the problem. If Stown can be considered a top 10 player in the world, he's a very good player. He's got an all around game. It seems very polished. There's so many things that are going for him. The problem at the moment he has is he isn't the guy, as you say. He can't like, he can't force you to win the game no matter what. He can't say, is, is the other guy on the other? Have they got an eco who's going off? Right, I'm going to outperform him. That's so the problem. I agree. As a team, they're just a really good team. And uh, the small problems are, are getting blown up and uh, wrecking their chances. Because let's be real. You saw last year, you can even have a flawed G2 lineup. But if Nico's as good as Nico's, maybe he can make up for it most of the time. Yep. You can have these teams. That's what the grip Z will obviously do that loads of times in Vitality. Stone isn't that player, though. Like, and so, unfortunately, they don't have sort of the ultimate band They're going to have to actually fix whatever core problems they have as a team. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. So we'll put a pin in the Katowice talk for now. Let's just do a couple of uh, big roster stories that I know Duncan's going to love. Uh, let's start. Um, I mean, dude, we'll have to do it on the next episode because there won't be time. But we, I will have to give you that fucking Nicola Nyholm forum post. Oh, come on. We'll have to do it, yeah. Uh, well, we'll just have to go through it piece we'll by piece. We'll save it, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because he's like, the things he says are fucking hilarious, mate. We'll, maybe we'll do like a dramatic reading of it. You can you know, play various roles. Um, but we'll talk about Astralis. Look, he's out, obviously. Farling's in. 
Um, Even though good old Casper did say, this is where, by the way, you actually can't beat Morgan. This is why Will Strauss will always win, Richard. Because I took, all I did is do one of those, almost like you're a presenter without comment, but I didn't even put presenter without comment. I just took the quote of where it said, you know, like Casper Fit, if you remember, at that first blast was sort of like, no, actually we'll be using Lockie for months to come or whatever, you know, for like the long term or something. He said some shit like that, like, you know, we'll be using him in the, in the short term. I can't remember what the line was. And obviously, like three months later, they've replaced him already and they've essentially benched him. And if people don't get it, they're probably cynically just going to essentially keep Lucky and bench prison so they can get an invite to the RMR yeah. or some shit, yeah. which, is, which is actually, the, of all the fucked up things they've done, this might be the most cynical to destroy a young man's career just to benefit Astral. So it's in keeping with what they do. But again, it's sort of gone under the radar. Probably because- actually, you know what though, dude, I, I think I think we've actually, we've, we've moved the dial on that one. Really? Yes, so people I, sort of get it. I saw comments right. okay. it, when when uh, Lucky gave his statement about how he was on it, were played, and it didn't work out, and it was great. And uh, and and you know, and then when Farlig was announced, I saw comments on Reddit where people going like, "Wow, they've done Lucky dirty." Fuck oh, fair ball. play then. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the problem I had with this. Was like they essentially c- communicated as if if you were Lucky, it's like right, I'm just in Australis now. Maybe we're the next major, next. So- He's only played like three or four lands. He's out already. He's just benched forever, probably mm. never to return. So, but I did see there was people going, Yeah, but he did say, like, look, Thor, he's been in the team for three months or that. Like, that is a period of time. Like, you can't win. You can't win if you're going to do that, guys. Like, obviously, this guy was going out of his way to sort of be like, We're not doing Russell. By the way, spoiler, G2 did that as well. I gave it to Hunter. Yeah. When he was like, We won't be making Russell moves. Like, mate, I know right now you're making Russell moves behind the scenes. Why are you saying that? So, I agree. I've always hated that aspect of Astralis. It's like, they don't really have a, for people who are liars, they don't put a lot of nuance into the lies, do they? They just sort of blatantly just say a lie. Because like, they know, I mean, they honestly, it was like know. when Nicola Nyom did that forum post. And all the fans were going, Oh, thanks for cutting through all of the bullshit. <laughs> I know He's the father of the bullshit and lies. I know He's the architect. <laughs> all the bullshit and lies flows from him. Mad. But um, yeah, listen, I- I'll I'll say this, right? Like, listen, I know we've been down on Lucky the whole time. That's only because he's shit, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, of course. But he wasn't set up to succeed in any no, way. No, no. Form, you know, so like you couldn't have asked for a worse debut in tier one CS, like as just as a potential opportunity. Realistically, Lucky should just be in a team like Copenhagen Flames. Then it's all yeah. fine and he can figure out his own career from then exactly. on. You know? yeah. Exactly. And, and you'll notice, as you rightly point out, he's not going to get that opportunity. No. He's, Sadly, like, say he he goes from being like academy to fucking you know in in the main team and like well not even academy because he came from tricked yeah. so, he, so he's, he's not even the academy player no, no. he came from tricked into Australis now like you say he doesn't even go to Australis talent he just lurks there on the bench he's the new Bobski yeah. there you go yeah he literally Bobski's gonna be on TV <laughs> I could have been playing I know tournament. what do you think pimp uh, I will now give a shit take that you know. <laughs> I think a rogue's going to win this team. <laughs> if it doesn't, then you can mark my. You know, like, did Hunden do anything <laughs> wrong? Like, uh, you know, it, it's uh, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Um, but look, so uh, Farleg's an upgrade. I mean, like, I thought Farleg, you know, he spent yeah, a while, yeah. he spent a while in free agency, a bit longer than I thought he would. Uh, you know, I, th- I think he's one of those players that low key players actually rated. So. The question now becomes, Astralis were falling. Are they a drastically different prospect to what they were before? And keep in mind, obviously, they just went out in, what was it? Was it 7 to 8? That's Something like that, yeah. yeah. So a, a slight improvement on where they've been, but certainly not where they're going to want to be in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the reputation and pedigree of the orb. I do think it should be like a decent upgrade. I don't think it's drastic as in, put it this way, when your name is Astralis and you have Glavin Zipnix on your roster, you're supposed to ask, can they be the number one team? Can they win this next week? Can they have an era? I don't think any of that's on the table. Like they had enough fundamental flaws that, as you say, weren't just lucky. It wasn't like at the end of every Astralis game, all you did is go and look at the box score. Lucky was minus 40 and go, there we go, guys. They would have, no, like they had problems with every other player minus Blame F, basically. Like everyone else had something off about them, something about their game. By the way, even their game looked shit. Like the T sides just looked so wonky. You, you found yourself thinking, like, is this a fucking Glaive team? So my problem is Farlig definitely adds competent Orpa, somebody who has played, admittedly, at the bottom end, but the tier one CS. All these positives get added. But my issue for real is not just the Farley angle. It's more like, are they going to fix the other angle? Like, is Comfort going to get shit together? Is Zipnix going to start playing like he gives a fuck? Is Glaive going to actually... Be... Are we going to see... Well, to, to be fair, Zipnix that? was improved at this comp. He had a couple of better games, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they have, they have so many problems in the team. I would personally suggest... 
like, look, I can't really know, obviously, with the whole CIS thing as to whether we're going to make the top 10 way less competitive. I don't see this as anything. I don't see it as a contender team, put that way. Mm-hmm. And if they can turn it around and people can all transform their games, like they say, I'll have to give it up. But I suspect this will be a, like more of the same, but just slightly better. Gets interesting as well, because they announced today that, uh, obviously, because of Abe's ban, uh, yes. from the major, they brought Trace. I mean, they used to be fucking teammates in a yeah, yeah. you know legendary team at MTW. Uh, you know, Trace is going to take over the coaching role. He was and, coaching the academy squad. If yes, and he, yeah, he he got bumped up from Astralis talent. So, I mean, you know, maybe that's a move that if things go well, uh, maybe that'll be permanent and Ave will be the one that goes down to sort of coaching the talent. Yeah, who knows? You know? um, so, something to watch. But yeah, I, I, my, my general read on it is, I, I still think, you know, the fans, Farleg's not a move that is going to excite me. It puts the, it puts any chance of device coming back. Oh, it kills that narrative really. like a motherfucker, doesn't it? Too yeah. bad. It is over. You are going to have to get used to it. And really now it's about what, what the old heads of this team can do. Yes, Glaive, Gla- this is it now, Glaive. No more uncertainty. Yep. You've got to prove you are the like you you are the go IGL. Yeah, yeah. But, but this will this will be a t- this will be a black a, mark if you do terrible yes, with this team. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, yeah. This is a real test for the yep. first time. So <clears throat> let's see what you can do. Uh, the other big bit of uh, roster news: Smoothie, what a mess! Uh, not not literally him. I mean the whole situation. That, that could have been said at any point in the history of either yeah, of us. I don't mean I don't mean you. Or guess the year. They have to like, guess this. <laughs> no, I know that's just going to be clout now. So, <laughs> yeah, what a mess! Um, no, obviously the situation. So I, I've been doing some digging. Was there ever a best of either numbers just about Smoothie? There must have been surely. Did no, we ever do one that was just that? No, I'll, I'll, you know what though? How I'll, can there not be? Because there's a demon one. There must know, be enough know. material Listen, for Smoothie. I'll, I'll put X Defo. It can even have the redemption arc in theory. Yeah, it's got a nice moment. Yeah. Yeah, I will. So, and it can open up with that smoothie. What a mess. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, no, not him. Because, uh, uh, like, listen, I, I, I got some sympathy here, even though everyone in the background's kind of telling me not to. Right. So, look, I, I did some research. I was thinking about making a video about this. So, I'm coming with some kind of like knowledge, some insight. All right. right. So, here's, here's sort of how it went down. Uh, and this is, this seems to be the, all the sources, all the different things. In fact, funnily enough, the only person I haven't spoken to about it is the Rat King himself. Smoothie himself, yes. Yeah. Uh, but basically, right, so what happened was he was in the team. He was on a trial. Now, there was already some reservations, apparently, because you may famously remember they they had him for a little bit when they were doing some qualifiers yes. but like last year, yeah. and then they, they dropped him and brought in that Regali guy that they brought in again, yes. I think was uh, from their academy team and he basically set, tweeted out oh yeah don't worry about it no harm no foul it was all i was only meant to play those games and not yeah. these ones because he was like on loan from whichever org he was still kind of under the contract to york of at that time now i can tell you that was nonsense that was actually something went on there and and oh right okay. yeah someone, someone went on there and it wasn't the plan and it wasn't the agreement and and so there was already reservations about joining full time. Yeah, yeah. But then with Jacinio being Jacinio, remember a rifler who converted to being an orper again. No matter what people say about him being an orper, right? The reality has another to guy done dirty. Yeah, yeah. Another guy basically just <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, hey, I know. Do you wanna do you wanna play a completely uh, so, new, r- new, so brutal in it? New and specialized role in this team. Yeah, you're not good enough at it. Bye, bye. <laughs> See, uh, go to Academy Land. You go. Uh, so anyway. Um, why you see see his call so much? It's like you're not bloody offer. I know. I never said I did it. I know. I know. It's well, get the fuck out then. I need an yeah, offer. Yeah, it's ruthless as fuck. Isn't it? <laughs> it's so bad, aren't they? I know. Absolutely ruthless. Um. So anyway, so fucking you know, Smoothie. Uh, there, there was lots of beer back and forth, but they, they they went with it. They brought him in. They specified it was a trial because they yeah. A lot of people missed that detail. If you remember, they even said it was like a three month trial, which yeah. would have been around now, right? Well, no, it, it actually did go a little bit longer. Which now that's oh, that's, fair enough. that's okay. the detail I don't know. Right. I don't know if he was sort of playing on spec or if ah, he has right. signed a contract yes. extension, whether they extended it by another three months or whatever. But anyway, bottom line. Prior to Katowice, something went on, and apparently there was members in the team, particularly the Swedes, but not necessarily exclusively, yeah. that just didn't get along, did, didn't chime with his personality. Thought he's too loud, too brash, not serious yeah, of enough. A little bit irritating. People Basically, know some of the stories back in the day, like Naples, like they, they they hate people who you know make uh, yeah. Essentially, what we were, essentially what an American but, would love. Makaleli as well. Pump, pump, yeah, a, yeah. They hate you know? that. that, that yeah. They're totally. That's the antithesis of Swedish CS for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and so. It, it was already a troubled culture fit. But basically, one player, and you'll be able to guess who, 
yes. uh, in a moment, went to the management and said that. Nah. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's him or me. Um, and the rest of the team aren't happy, you know, back me up. So make a call. And in that moment, they had made the decision prior to Katowice to that, no matter what happened, even if they won the whole tournament, Smuya was out. And so the management then went to Smuya and said, listen, we're fighting to sort of keep you in the team here. The team's a little bit despondent. You know, they're not, they're not big on you. This is your last chance. You've got to make it work. Even though, of course, they're already cutting him. They go, do the tournament, doesn't work very well. Uh, I mean, and you can see there's like, you know, all, all sorts of stuff fucking coming out. Um, people were suddenly highlighting clips from Blast, I think it was, where it was like, you know, he, he, uh, he was saying, have you ever seen a bald egg fly or something like that on the thing? And right. Face is just like, right. Get this cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can just see it, right? So anyway, the 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 Katowice uh, uh, tournament does go well. Uh, he go, Smooey goes to the airport to fly back and he gets told, there, you're out. <laughs> and just has to come home and deal with it. So naturally, and I will say this, Smooey didn't handle it particularly well. Oh, not, of course. Not known for that. Uh, he said some stuff on Twitter I wouldn't have done. He tweeted some stuff out. And I'll just Pretty add, fucked up scenario to be put into. No, I get yeah, it. I'd be pissed off for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he also did a, a skins giveaway where the code was bald egg. <laughs> You have to understand, fans. I know you guys who are long-term viewers will know this. Smoothie is not exactly the fucking sharpest tool in the box. He doesn't have a lot of nuance, does he? Like, you have to realise he probably thought that was some, like, god tier cipher that only people who know would know what I'm talking Everyone knows there's only one bald player in the team. Like, you know what? He, in some ways, he's... And, is his own worst enemy, isn't he, Mitchell? Believe it or not. So no, I no. Yeah, I know that. And then he all, <laughs> uh, then he also <laughs> right. did. I know. He also did. Look, I'm not going to tell you guys who it was. I don't like drama anymore. All I'm going to yeah. say is no. Cody is fuck the bald egg guy. <laughs> yeah. Used to be an LGB before fanatic. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like I was so obvious. Mate. I know yeah. exactly. Um. So so no. He um. He uh. <clears throat> he, he also did like uh, I think it was an Insta thing where it was him in a mask doing this, and it was said. Back home, fuck you know who. <laughs> yeah, like that. I like that he's still dropping breadcrumbs. Now I won't reveal who it was though. Guys, yeah. But now <laughs> so ridiculous. I'm thing. gonna go out on a limb and say it was Crim. Like, Seems I'm like gonna, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also you just think of the rest of the team, right? Mezzi and Alex must have known what they were getting into when they brought Smoogie in for fuck's sake. Yeah, and listen, they're from, from the UK. From what my yeah, I know from my understanding, apparently Alex is a little bit that was a little bit down on him as well for whatever reason. But like, so anyway, look, okay. as we'll get to uh, so Smoogie is out. Right, he, he get, he's cut from the lineup, despite yeah. the fact that we were talking in the last episode about oh, Fnatic are on the ups. And, they were, yeah, uh, yeah. They, they, literally, right. So, okay, how badly can you handle uh, a roster, an exercise? We're about to find out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, an, an, an exercise. <laughs> so, Smoothie goes right. He's gone. That's your Orpa, who, by the way, yeah, his numbers haven't been great the last like couple of months. Kind of understandable, really. Yeah, yeah. What you're telling us is true, but they've been consistent, and it, it, you know he's still been one of the better Orpas down there in the sort of ten to of course, thirty yeah. bracket. Um, and and so you replace him with R- R- Regali, not a great player by any stretch of the imagination. Still learning his craft. Still learning his trade. You can go look at his stats, by the way. You know, they're all right. Uh, they're, they're fine. You know, he's got like a 1.14 rating, but then you have to contextualize that and understand that, obviously, that's coming against, you know, generally lesser opponents. He's only got a handful of games against truly sort of top-tier opposition under his belt. But then here's the other part to it. So you uh, suddenly... Just before the RMR quals, the, like that you're in, you're not playing Brolam. You're your star player, right? And why Essentially is that? the face of the team for the future as well. Like yeah. it's the whole team basically, that guy, isn't he? Yeah. And why is that? Well, because NIP wanna buy him from you. So to be clear. You must have had no inkling whatsoever that yes. this was coming. Because- if you did, you're an absolute clown that you made the team <laughs> in this order. Yeah. yeah. So, so now you can't play Brolan for these must-win games. A qualifier to get into a qualifier to get to the major. It's a long, long road. Doable. It would have been doable with the squad you had if everything went right. Now you've replaced your orbit. Now your star rifle is out the team. Your star rifle is out the team. And you're replacing him with Pepsor. 
And we know you're definitely going to sell for all the flexing and all of the course, haggling. Of course they will. Right? Be- because you you have rebuffed the first bid. You've rejected that. Apparently it was 600000 Wasn't enough. They're holding out for closer to 820 or something like that, according to reports. And obviously NIP just won Smart it. move, by the way. Nip don't have many people they can sign. You've sort of yeah. got over a barrel there. I even myself thought to my... And this is an angle I thought, because obviously we have a, we have an inside on the industry where even if you don't know, you can speculate. I even wondered myself, maybe that's part of why Device hasn't come back. Maybe he said, you know, I want to have like a competent team before I return us. You know, I'm yeah. sure that, by the way, great way to make Device want to play with you more if you bring fucking Brolan over. Yeah, well, well there's a yeah. lot of implied value yes. if you nip to yes. this move. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it sort of makes me wonder almost as well if, like, you know, behind the scenes, like, I don't know if Device has said, like, you've got to get me some help or something, like, you know, what yeah, I mean? like, that would yeah. be totally reasonable. Or the other one is maybe yeah. you know, Device doesn't come back. You got to, yeah. unlike Fnatic, you want to have a name that you can pre- present that fans well, will be happy. One of the initial reports was that it was going to be a swap deal. I saw Bro, there was I'm... like a dodgy tweet that was like that. Yeah, it's like some yeah. bullshit account. Yeah, yeah, there's no way. All you need to know about that, and genuinely, this is all you need to know, is Khan himself from Fnatic retweeted that, obviously to make fun of it. Yeah. Not because he actually secretly leaking a deal from his team, like to make fun of the fact it's obviously a ludicrous premise if it's not true, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know actually if it was uh, because, right, I would just, this is a tangent, but I'll just mention it. So somebody, Oh yeah, it's this is okay actually. So it 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 is. The, these are the people who said that was. If these are the only people who said it was a swap deal. So what what happened was right. There was a, a new account created called Oil Leaks, and <laughs> I hadn't. I had right. <laughs> can't can't. Not. Why are we in such a clown world on this shit? No, 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 no. But you're gonna animal. you're gonna yeah, like this. Animal, you will like on. this, right? So. People were mentioning it to me on my stream because I've been streaming the RMRs yeah. lately and they were going, seeing this new leak account, Richard, like Polish leaks, like Danish leaks, bloody clout seekers. And, I, and I, like, okay. I, I, I was just like, obviously, I've never even looked at the account. Yeah, right? yeah, so I've I was going, I just said, oh, yeah, it looks, it's probably that because the Polish leaks account shut down and then this one springs up. It's probably that guy. Yeah, it's yeah. probably that guy. But anyway, I went and looked at the account. Mate, it's a fucking parody account. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's a fucking moron, yes. aren't they? So the fact that, right, like, listen, put it this way. They were taking the piss out of all of these leaked sites. That's what they were doing because right. like, they were saying simple is going to go back to Team Liquid as he has expressed an interest. Oh, right. In That's good. I like that. North American Counter-Strike and stuff like this. And people are like retweeting it and believing it because obviously like Pete, there's just no filter for this garbage. And then their last tweet on, on the account was just like, unfortunately, due to the recent amount of oil leaks, we have now run out of oil and we cannot post anymore. And it's mirroring that fucking stupid Polish oh, leaks right. account because they were going, sad news, we have to stop you know, clout chasing or whatever the fuck. So, uh, not even, not even Polish, Danish. Like, oh, yes. I, I, oh, what's I think it, it I started as Polish. Oh, the fucking changed. leaks. Yeah. Anyway, so whatever. But, so basically, it's a fucking parody account. And so, and it's pulled the wool over everyone's eyes. So if they were saying to swap deal, then obviously it's a joke and it never was. But if it was reported elsewhere, then who fucking knows? But the bottom line is, it that would never happen in a million no, no. years. Why would Device do that to himself? So anyway, back to the point. Uh, let's assume brolan has gone. He's, he is gone. He, the, the deal will be done. Uh, because otherwise you've completely fucked yourself up for the for the RMR for no reason whatsoever. Yes. Um and and so who are Fnatic gonna get? What's that money gonna do, by the way? Who are you gonna go out and buy? Who's gonna want to come and play in this fucking busted ass patchwork squad now? And I think it gets as worse well. as well, dude. Because I have to yeah. say, the man of the hour, the one who was pissed with Smooya. Like, if you're Crims, are you really staying in a team that's got almost nothing left? Like, you remember all those stories we've heard, yeah. maybe JW and Flusher and all off, like a last dance that they made. There's so many, and Andy's also a competent player. He could go to all the tier one teams. Like, I, don't, I feel like this is where you just lose Crims. You've got almost nothing left. You've got Alex at that point. Well, anyway. put it this way if you cut Smoothie to essentially keep Crims, and then, like, you lose Brolan, oh, and then Crims just says, you know what, I'm, I'm sort of done anyway. Like, fuck it, this team's garbage. I'm I'm 27. I've won everything. I'm a fucking legend. I'm out. Like You are the most incompetent team manager ever at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> no, but it's the point. Like, how can you how can you even commit to the Brolan thing after you let Smoothie go? Because no, you, I find it you can't weird. let them go. Yes. You can't let them both go. Yep. Before a qualifier, which will literally decide whether or not you're at the next major. Yep. Wow. Fucking wow. So, mate, everything we said last episode about Fnatic, just unwrapped. Oh, it's, it's just gone, got, yeah. Yeah, it's all nonsense now. 
I mean, listen, here's a broader point, right? So I'll, I'll just ask your opinion about this. We don't even have viewer questions. So we'll double up next one. So we can just, we can just do these. Um, like, do, do you think like these teams, like when it's like, oh, I just don't get along with it. Like for me, you should be doing something heinous to get cut from a team. Yes. Not just be a little bit annoying or whatever. Yes. It, it's madness. Like why does everyone have to be friends? There's no other job, by the way. You would, you would, I don't no, even I think don't. in sports. Honestly, like it's nice when everyone gets along, but I know multiple teams where the dress legendary teams that have won everything where the dressing room's completely fucking fractured, but they just come together on a weekend and fucking make it work mega. Yes. Why why, why can't esports teams do that, dude? No, I also think there, this is an egregious example of it as well to me, because I also like I get this move more if you had a, a straight fire guy that you wanted instead. And now, as you say, now it could be that maybe this movie wasn't that out of pocket. Well, it's just that this guy's better and you want an excuse to get him in. That makes sense to me. The reason why this move is whack is because you take him out, which just creates a problem. You have no solution to the problem. The Regali guy ate it, let's be real. And then on top of that, now that you've lost a brought it, you've just you've just fucked your whole team. So yeah, I, I don't get it either. Like I have to say, this would genuinely be what I would say. Unless, because like, uh, here's the best way to say it. If it was really any kind of a problem with how he actually played the game, like you actually, so for example, say you just don't think he's a good enough tier one opera, then yeah. just make that the argument. Just make it that, look, I don't want to play with him. We'd get a better opera. Because if you make it like he's an iron or he's an asshole, I don't like him, right? I would genuinely, if I'm the GM, turn around. And even if, by the way, it's Crims, I'd go, yeah, but look where you are in your career, mate. Like, we haven't got that many other people we can get. Like, at the end of the day, beggars can't be choosers. Like, mm-hmm. in this scenario, look, think about how many years we've just gone now without a competent team. This is the first line we've got together that's showing some promise. All right, we'll keep our eye on it. If he's really causing issue, by the way, maybe we can even do something about it. Maybe we can approach him. Maybe he can sort of learn to be a little bit more acclimatized to playing with Swedish players. Maybe there's some fixes there, because I agree with you. Unless it's for performance reasons, which they uh, they at least have hidden behind the idea it isn't. Yeah. So I have to judge them on the idea it isn't. So I agree. If it's just that, like, oh, I don't get along with him, that ain't enough. I agree. That ain't enough, mate. Not to throw away all this time you've built the squad and brought these people in. like, And also, that there's a little bit of devish behaviour there. Like, I might I might tolerate that if that was simple and Nico would say it. Come on, mate. Crims, you're an amazing player and a great player, but, like, you are you're like, at the end of your career. Like, I'm not being around you for the next five years, am I? I know, and like obviously we got pro league coming up as well. It's like man, they oh, could the timing's made... ass as well. Yeah, isn't it? why that... would you do that as well? Why would you tell him before Katowice for fuck's sake? It's like one of the biggest events of the whole year. But it's like you look at the group they're in. They could have fucking. They could have been upset potential man. We don't Especially know. If now, Devi- yeah, we don't know if Device is coming back for NIP. Yes. They got that Australian team, the worst team in the competition. There, that looking for Og team. They're in with Mouse. Who knows which Mouse is gonna fucking turn up? Entropic. You know, the only one I would say, I, I like G G two. We've got the freest wins of all time in my opinion in that group but Fnatic low key could have had a run at this yeah, in yeah. in this pro league and now you fucked it up and as I said mate I, I, I know you haven't watched any of these RMR open qualifiers I don't think I don't think you realise like they lost um in, in they the lost one, to a mixed team or something man. so in the one before the one today they lost to uh, Ave that team with waterfalls on it. If you remember. Oh him. yeah. I remember that back in the day. So, yeah. so, and I mean, again, they, they like, they got beat. I mean, one, I think it was a 16, 14 on one map, but then it was like pretty comfortable on the other. So you had that, uh, the, the loss to, like I say, it was Illuminar in a best of one today. Who the fuck are Illumina? <laughs> like real talk. Like if you're, you know, like I know that people in the chat are going to be how disrespectful they've got. PA no, no. Or whatever. By you, the way, you know I mean? Illuminar basically is a Polish esports. Mm. I only know them from League of Legends, mate. I didn't even. I barely know them from CS:GO because yeah. they've always just been like tier two or whatever, or like top of yeah. tier three, isn't it? So you know, like it's it's fucking bad. It's bleak. You ain't getting no. You, you like to, to the next the next qualifier after this is the last one. It is literal last chance saloon. Pro league is starting, and you have turned your fucking team that was like a fucking dark horse into a fucking just a busted nothing. ass nag. Yeah, nothing, a, fucking, yeah. a donkey. Mental. Uh, so I hope Fnatic have a plan. I mean, here is the thing: maybe they do, and maybe they're going to spend that some of that money they get from uh, uh, okay. Brawlhunt to bring in a big player. But I don't know who the fuck it would be. No, there's the other thing: the fix has to be enormous, in my opinion. 
Like, yeah. as, like, I even think the reason why that troll account was able to say it's a device for bro and swap is because the joke is the troll account has to come up with some plausible move <laughs> that will make this make sense. Yeah. And by the way, if you're a fanatic ma- manager, consider this for a second. They had to pretend that the guy with the best resume ever was the one coming on the other side of the deal to make this sound like you're not morons. Whereas instead, what it looks like is you're just giving the whole team away, aren't you? you, you listen, you're going to get money for Brawlin, but I agree. There's the worrying part to me. It's like, I can't trust as of right this moment that that 600K or whatever goes and buys a good player. Like, Because mm-hmm. as you've already alluded to, actually, even though at the moment, because it's an international team, loads of fans are making Fnatic a spot that they want all these agents to go. Mm-hmm. Mate, whenever I talk behind the scenes, nobody gives a fuck about joining Fnatic. Like, no, no. It's, just not, it's not an attractive those, destination at all. Those, those days are gone. Those yeah. days are gone. Um, and uh, other big news, Cooster's back. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. He's joined August, mate. Hasn't played, hasn't played since the Gen G days in 2020. Had a whole career in Valorant or whatever. Come back. Yeah. It's metal in it. I know. What a fucking joke this game is. <laughs> That's almost like that episode where, I noticed you put it in like Best of By the Numbers, I think, where it was yeah. like, the one where it was like in PTR has announced his retirement. Yeah, it was no, like last you, year or something. Like, you were absolutely out I, of, I, I out can't handle that, man. It's 2021 or whatever. Like, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, look, uh, I guess I guess we'll leave it there. Uh, that's the news. That's the cat of heats and stuff. That's obviously the situation about how uh, the invasion in Ukraine uh, is going to affect us. And we'll keep you up to date as we hear more, because I'm sure that situation is going to continue uh, to develop. We certainly hope that the conflict itself uh, doesn't uh, continue uh, anymore. Um, and hopefully we're not talking... Uh, about it being an ongoing issue by the time of the next episode. Uh, Obvious shout out to the sponsors that make the show possible. Uh, Check out midnight.com, our new sponsor. They've been super cool to work with. Uh, My old chum, your old chum, Sue Joy over there uh, now. So that's been been a blast uh, catching up with him. And um, they've just been doing some really cool initiatives and we've got some great ideas for content. I think like I'm going to be retweeting as a PC giveaway. You should check out from them as well. They're really doing a lot of stuff uh, and it, and it's great to see. Uh, and of course, obviously our VPN sponsor going to NordVPN.com slash RLS to take advantage of that. That is it. That was by the numbers. Uh, apologies for not doing the viewer questions. We'll double up. We'll get you next time. Uh, but until then, now more than ever, make sure you take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon.